Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen here on Dork Tales. I hope you're all doing well and you all had happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Merry Sol is it Merry Solstice? Whatever your solstice is. Happy I hope Yule. It was Oh yeah, yeah. I hope your Yule is full of mules. Um, I hope Blessed Solstice. It's Blessed, Blessed Solstice. Blessed Solstice. I hope that you were able to rap battle your lewds uh in order to protect your beer i think it is that these things are lewds right that's how it's pronounced uh the the horse skeletons um i hope you were able to wrap oh, right, yes. yeah, yeah wrap battle your horse skeletons uh to keep your beer yep to keep your beer so good. i love that wiki wiki so m&m much. would always have beer yeah because you can't beat him you can't beat him he is the rap well, that, god. Um, he would dress up as gone. one and go around and take people's that's gear. that's that's how that's what he does in retirement <laughs> now but anyway hello and welcome to dragon lance i'm your dungeon master kelly i use he and him and i am very excited to be back uh for episode three of dragon lance uh betrayal at high hill uh which is gonna be Wait. fine it's fine it's, it's just fine. it's it's just it's, a reenactment it's just a reenactment nothing's nothing's going to go wrong on a day there's like a betrayal in the reenactment right it's, absolutely yeah, there, yeah, yeah that's what it's about that's what it's about you know, that and the hokey pokey. Uh, so, folks, it is a fantastic day for Dungeons & Dragons. I'm very happy to be playing it tonight with these lovely people around me. Uh, we're going to do a round of introductions, then a couple of quick end-of-the-year announcements. Uh, but first, let's hear from them, uh, starting with Christine. Hey, Christine. Hello, I am Christine. I use she, her pronouns. I am playing Kalara um, Vingard. Kalara Vingard, um, our human cleric. All right. Um, over to Chris. Oh, hello, it's uh, Chris here. Uh, I go by Diggy Blog in the chat and on the Discord. Uh, I can be found on uh, that Dorktail stream thing every once in a while, exclusively. Uh, if you find me on something else, I'm only there for the memes. Um, exclusive. Yep, exclusive. We're an exclusive relationship, Dorktails and I. Um, yeah, I'm super excited to be here. I will be playing uh, Godfrey High Valor, the uh, Want to be Knight of Salamnia? One day. One day. One, One day. day. Maybe. Oh. I don't know. We'll All see. All right. Hello, Robin. Hello, I'm Robin. I use she, her pronouns, as does Razira Moonbrush. Moonbrush. I forgot my name. Sorry. I'm, I'm a bit, apparently a bit spacey today. So if I have some trouble putting sentences together, um, that is why. Apparently I forgot my own character's last name. And I tried to look at the screen to cheat, <laughs> and but we don't have the last names there anymore. And I'm just like, well, there was my safety net. Um, but Leave yeah, uh, Razira, who also uses um, that's mine for for their uh, pronouns as well. That and mine. All right. Yeah. Um, let's pass over to Cal. Hey, Cal. Hello, it's me, Cal. I use he, him pronouns. I play Orange. Tiros and Oren Tiros is figuring themselves out. They can use any any pronouns, and uh, I'm excited to be here. It's uh, we're excited to have you. Um, let <laughs> us uh, and you have a point of determination. The chat just bought you. And finally, last but not least, let's pass Ooh. over to Jen. Hi, I'm Jen. I use she/her pronouns, and I will play play. Yeah, I also can't talk tonight. Apparently, we're great. At this. Um, I'm having medication issues so that's that's a fun time but anyway um yes i will be playing hazel night granite who also uses she her pronouns nice all right so before we hop into game i just want to do a quick thank you to ping who allows us to have uh streaming and nice high definition video i also want to apologize for the youtube output because uh obs has been having some crashing issues with my computer so i changed some settings and ruined everything because i could only see it after the video was encoded so i'm really sorry that we became kind of an acid trip midway through the game with our faces melting and stuff uh it should be looking good now it should be looking even better than last time because I was I, I put my computer on a plan. I was gonna say we look yeah. like really crisp. Like you can really see the makeup on everyone right now. And like, yeah, I have it, us on movie star really mode. Good. So it is my yeah. my computer's only using seventy percent of its CPU, eighty percent of its CPU right now. <laughs> oh my goodness! So it's fine, and you know what my computer's made of? Yeah. Unobtainium. It's very hard to obtain. It's made of a lot of stuff. It's made of that processor that was impossible to get back in the, in the pandemic. Unobtainium. 
All right. Uh, so thank you to Ping for that. And a quick thank you to our friends at Norse Foundry. If you would like to win a set of dice and you're watching live, go ahead and type uh, Christine exclamation mark Norse. Yes, it will be exclamation mark Norse. Okay. So when we tell uh, you that it'll be exclamation mark Norse. Uh, and okay. You... It's good to go now. Okay. All right. So as of now, if you type exclamation mark Norse on uh, on the live video, uh, you are going to be entered to win a set of metal dice from Norse Foundry, including a big chunker uh, D20. Uh, those will be sent out to you if you live in the United States. And if you live outside of the United States, you'll be getting a gift certificate instead to be used at the Norse Foundry store. Uh, the Norse Foundry, a fantastic group of people from down in the States who have uh, been big supporters of the channel for a while mm -hmm. um, and have given us like dice which have our logos on them, which if you raise enough of a stink, maybe they'll make for you. Um, so exclamation mark Norse, pop that in. Uh, and if you are watching on YouTube later, I'm sorry, you missed it. Uh, the only other thing is that in order to win, you have to be here when we do our draw on our break. Otherwise you missed it and we'll draw again uh, because you, you got to be here. We, we don't want to miss out. Uh, but thank you to Norse Foundry. Eric, thank you so much for your help on that one, man. That's really appreciated. Um, and I hope you are enjoying watching the campaign. They're nice Eric's. dice. They're nice dice. They're nice people. And Eric, uh, the, the their dude that handles us is like uh, not only one of our patrons, but also like just a huge Dragonlance fan and really cool oh, dude. Nice. So, yeah. So very excited for that. Okay. Uh, so uh, does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns before we hop into game? All right. So I this mean, is many session... concerns, but not okay. uh, this not is a, session two, episodes. right? And we haven't seen any dragons and or lances yet. It's session this three. This is session three, three. Chris. Where yeah. were you last episode, Chris? Did, Did you get hit really I'm tired? Hard? <laughs> or the for the for the prelude where you just like remember we fought the Sorry, I've been the, distracted the lizard by the girl thing? next door. Ha. Oh, he was hit by the Draconians rather hard. Yes. Cool. All right. So, uh, folks, we are going to be hopping into game. Uh, we Tonight, you are going to be seeing a new system that D&D has implemented. I think it's a little sparse. We'll talk about that during the break, if it happens before the break, and uh, maybe a little bit after stream there. Uh, but we're going to have some fun, and I hope you stick with us for that. Uh, Y'all ready for this? Let's do oh, it. I'm, I was just reading a comment being like, I have concern for our wonderful fish pie town. And I'm like, me too. I love That's this fun. town so much. It's Sad fine. Time. They wouldn't. They wouldn't set set it up. This this isn't like the town's character development episode. <laughs> I have wow, so many where... notes from this town. So many notes. You you definitely going to need those for the entire rest of the campaign. So, uh, last <laughs> episode. Last episode, you all went uh, and attended Ispen Green Shield's funeral. At Ispen Green Shield's funeral, you all shared a a sadness, a, a number of stories. You shared memories of your departed friend. And then, as the night wore on, you met more and more people whose lives had been affected by Ispen. Afterwards, the um, the local castellan, Becklin, Uth. Viharin asked you to come by, um, to come by her um, her place at Thornwall Keep the next day, to retrieve something that Ispen had left behind for you. As you were brought over there by her sort of squire, Derrett Highwater, she had you for breakfast, and uh, after the meal was done, provided you with an item. There, inside of the study and her little library, she opened a box for you, revealing a round green shield, which is where we ended last episode, and it's where we will begin this. Now, the library is comfortable. It is ringed by a number of old artifacts that have been dug out from around Thornwall Keep, but your eyes are glued to the thing in front of you. A scarred, broadleaf tree painted on a field of mossy green in the middle of a large round shield. Ispen's shield, the one which he drew his name from, reportedly given to him by a unicorn in the far-off forest of Darkenwood. No matter how many times you spoke with him, 
you never were 100% sure that this wasn't another tall tale. Or maybe it was something real. Maybe there was something magic about this shield. He proclaimed that it was. Many a time, he would say. The shield saved my life. It gives me a, a distinct supernatural advantage, Ispin said. But maybe it was just a good luck charm. Either way, Becklin holds it in front of you. So, this belongs to, well, the five of you. How are five of us supposed to share a shield? Yeah, unless we cut it up, I don't know if I spend what I would have wanted <laughs> us to break it into five even pieces. But I feel like that you, you wouldn't really get the benefit of its shield anymore. It's not my choice to say how you share it, only that you do possess it. He wanted you to have it, the five of you. Well, the four of you and your mentor, Hazel. But I think that he would have been delighted enough to see a sorcerous dwarf that he would have had no argument at you weighing in. Such a fortuitous sign. He anyway. seems like the type. He does. Now, that being said, um, I assume that you're going to um, be participating in the Battle of High Hill reenactment. Uh, of course. Yeah. Good. Oh, well, it's been yeah, that sentimental old man. <laughs> well, I would not have it any other way than Ispin's shield being present. So I only will release this to you if you guarantee me your attendance. You have my word. I will be there. Oh, a word of Salamic Spire. Uh, a Salamic Squire. <laughs> Take note, Dad. Uh, yeah, totally. Um, I mean, verily. You'll be there as well, I hope. Of, of course. Uh, I'm going to be leading the charge uh, against the uh, the mercenaries. Or I look forward to being under your command. Well, it depends. Uh, Oh, Perhaps you'll be in the mercenaries. Huh. Honestly, given that um, the mercenaries are going to be representing the the Starians and um, the uh, town militia will be representing the um, the people of Salamnir and uh, the knights that once kept I Hill, wouldn't it be bad to see a couple of future members of. Uh, of the knighthood present. You can count on us. Good. Now look over at Derek. Uh yeah, absolutely. I'll I'll I will uh of course. Uh I will be happy to have you, Sir Squire. I suppose I could role play a human during all of this. Were there elves suppose. in this battle? Dwarves? The, the, perhaps one. Huh? I, I think that the, the fantasy of the roleplay is more important than the actual situational mechanics. How dare you? <laughs> Do you think I could ride it on a mule just so I could have a little bit of a height advantage? Otherwise, I'm quite a short kinder compared to a human. I imagine that they had some cavalry, yes, Razira. And some kinder. Um... I'm sure that you could borrow a donkey from in town. Um, Kalara, is your brother going to be participating? I think so. Um, I'm I'm sure Kern will, but uh, mm. Landon might show up randomly. <laughs> mm, it's a bit... Well, I'm sure that Kern will cut, cut uh, quite a, a dashing figure on the battlefield. Um, do, Godfrey, do talk that, um... Do you talk to Levna and encourage her to attend as well? I was actually surprised not to see her here. Was there, um... Did something come up? Um, just a, a personal matter Sir Levna needed to attend to. I see. Well, I hope everything's alright and that she's not, um... Oh, I, I'm sure she's... She's, uh... She's fine. Sir Levna oh. can handle herself quite well. Excellent. Um, of course. Well, um... I, 
I have to ask, are are there any rules against how we fight or if you're planning to use magic, I would suggest you only use um politrix. Everyone there it's 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 merely a reenactment. Um, we're going to be use, using padded weapons, blunted instruments, wooden swords. It's... No one has any chance of being actually hurt. Mm. Of course. Beyond and I have no intention of actually hurting anyone. Excellent. Please do not rain fire down from the sky. You can do that. Okay. If I try... What, if, it, what, what if there's accidental... Um, I don't know. Let's let's, for example, say like manure throwing. That's all right, right? So long. I imagine that would be based on the individual. Um, I would hope that no one would do such. Um... Remember, this is all in good fun. It's it's all in good fun. Um, it's. I I could explain it a bit better to you if you'd like. Um, at the actual battle, but for the most part, um. It's going to, it's going to reenact, um, of course, this battle where the Knights of Salamnia held victory over um, the eastern nation of Ishtar, tried to invade High Hill. So this year, uh, Mayor Raven has engaged for um, for my friend and, and Ispin's friend, uh, Cudgel Iron Smile, who you met at the funeral, uh, to lead her mercenary band as the Istarian forces. Um, now, um... Basically, it's a game. Hmm. Yes. And, um... It's going to have, uh... It's going to have a drink wagon. Um, the, the basic premise is that you will have a little mock battle. Uh, the mercenaries will charge up the west hill, while the militia and the other participants will charge down the hill. Uh, and uh, the two groups will clash in a, in a mock fight kind of midway along the hill, like kind of near the wall. And um, the eventually the Starian forces will retreat. And um, that's pretty much it. You're, you're welcome to wear your own armor because it does strike a quite a, quite a nice... Um, nice silhouette uh, but uh, for the most part it will be blunted swords and wooden spears and things like that um, th no real weapons um, then at the bugle call or whatever signal it is this year last year it was a bugle um, the um, the Astarians the, the mercenaries will turn tail they will run you will hoot and holler and then we will all have uh, quite a few celebratory drinks no, it's just, it's acting. It's a, it's a community live-action storytelling, it sounds I hear like. you elves are quite big into that. Y yes, we've, we're, we're quite into uh, the live-action storytelling. Ah, uh, yes, last. Last, yes. We're lasters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One might even say that... Um... I've run a few lasts myself. Have you? Indeed. Well, they, yeah. Are they are they more story based or action based? I'm very intrigued by by what elves do with all their spare time. Are you? Do There's you a play, lot of it. Do you, do you play like heroes of old, taking the actions of old? Are you a last action hero? The very last. <laughs> Sometimes even even we pretend to be dreadful creatures of the night. It's drink blood, and sometimes we pretend that we're heroes and gods. You say so. You really have so you be. It's almost like you do different chronicles, and they could be dark as well. Yes. Now, are these joint hallucinations, or oh, with the benefit of magic, I suppose oh, it, you could do quite a bit. It's 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 just it's just pretend. Hmm. We could make it not but with pretend. magic and illusions. Yeah. Some well, people think it's too far. Done this They've done this in years past, if I remember. It's been it's been a lot of fun, and the kids seem to enjoy the show. Everyone enjoys. I it. did. Hmm. My well, speaking... kinfolk have mushrooms that could probably help with it as well. You know, vivid. You're thinking words. of more vision quest, Hazel. <laughs> Are they not the same? Uh, well, uh, actually, <laughs> they're pretty similar. <laughs> 
I mean, you go, you you know, seek quests. And, Did you bring uh, these mushrooms with with you for? No, but I'm sure I could find something equivalent. Okay, okay, maybe not <laughs> today. <laughs> well. Very well. I do have I... some illusion magic I could use, though. Should we wish it? So long as it doesn't ha cause harm to anyone, I see no reason why that could not be interesting. Um, so long as it wouldn't get you in trouble, casting spells is still... Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Um, well, um, now that you have the shield, uh, I should probably go and enjoy the festival myself. So should you, and um, I must prepare. Uh, you have a few hours. It will be pretty obvious when it's time to, to meet at High Hill. It's not terribly far from town. In fact, you probably... Where would I find a donkey? I would say go to the town circle. Probably would be a good place to find one. Um, you could go right. uh, look for a man named... Um, a, na a man named Rickon. He's a, a local donkey... Seller, donkey merchant, donkey stable master. Yes, sounds about right. Although he's a bit unstable, <laughs> just a little bit. Hmm. But um, I look forward to uh, to seeing you victorious today. Hmm. Uh, thank you for uh, supplying those fish the fish pies as well uh thank you for making them as well calara calara um they're quite delicious and i definitely going to need to get some more before we leave or more for breakfast or lunch or mm -hmm. dinner i'm glad you like them yeah they're they're wonderful um they're my own recipe oh they're you, you do a great job with them they were a big hit. I don't think they lasted last like more than fifteen minutes. Yeah, th they gently don't. Right. Um, so, who wants to uh, um, take charge with uh, Ispin's shield in in the battle? I think that's up to you, Mister Knight. I think I agree with that. Well. I, I would think I'm... that it's up to you are both from this town and it seems that you knew him on a more personal level at different times throughout your life I would leave it between you two I... between I think, uh... yeah <laughs> oh oh no I mean Godfrey obviously oh, um, I, I, I don't it's know been if... trained you Yes. Um, what would I do I just, with a shield? It just seems like a... Okay. I think you would use yeah, it as it's intended it. to be used. You you I would was... actually be able to get some use out of it. Unlike... I mean, no. I could, but... Then what but would for, I... For, for a show? Clara will pick it up for a moment and it hides almost her entire body. <laughs> Oh, wow. I think it's too big for me. Uh, keep you wow, safe. You, you can pick that up. <laughs> I mean, she, she's a baker. She's, she's not unstrong. You gotta need that bread. Okay. All right then. I will. Uh, I'll uh, almost reverent, re reverently like um, tr uh, reach out for the shield and like hold this mangled up kind of round greed shield and uh, stands out Riz will so try much. and do the spit shine on it like try and like wee -wee 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 -wee, try and get it a little bit clean I'll look down at Riz and say yeah that that, that works you, you gotta make sure you can use the sunlight for a distraction right yeah, I guess I don't need the hair anymore. Oh, but it looks really good on you, Godfrey. I think you should keep it. Thanks. Don't worry. It's not going anywhere. You'll have to teach me your volume tips. Or does it just do that on its own? 
Actually, it's just natural. It's, uh, oh. As long as I keep it trimmed a certain length, it uh, just does it all on its own. Hmm. I'm not jealous. <laughs> well, now that you've decided, um, I hope you enjoy the festival. And Becklin will kind of very gently gesture toward the door. <laughs> Uh, Godfrey, please do me a favor and equip yourself a plus one shield. Yeah, uh, so that's going to raise your AC by three when like, it's equipped. It's actually magic? It's It potentially is. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> you don't know uh, yet. It does not require attunement. We'll raise your AC plus two for the shield, plus one for the plus one. Wow. <laughs> Which nice. means that you have an AC of what now? 19. Yeah, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward um, to I look forward to aiming all of my attacks at you. I I am going to uh, cast Mage Armor on myself, which is good for eight hours. <laughs> no. That's a good call. Um, is there any other baked goods in this this area? Uh, in the library, there. We well, don't want I want you to do. I want you to roll on your Kender chart. All right, <laughs> that makes sense. Give me the what expanded does Kender chart. Shield look like. And and actually, while she's doing that, um, you, I know you said uh, we had a long rest. I can't remember. Was that after? That was after. You slept all last night. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it was after I did the Ray of Sickness thing. Yeah. It absolutely was. Cool. Perfect. But right, I, am still, I am still. I am still going to have uh, New Moon as my, uh, my thing because, yeah, mm -hmm. stuff. Cool. Works for me. All right, so uh, as you're ushered out, Razira, looking into your pack, you are going to see that uh, um, in your in your pocket, um, you are going to find a cookie. Um, hmm. It's half eaten and is wrapped in a napkin that when you unfold it, turns out to be a sketch of a rather happy pug dog. It's got like oh. some like butter stains on it. and That's adorable. <laughs> Derrett will walk outside with you and go, Oh, hey, that's my sketch. Oh, and my cookie. Oh, um, here, I found it, apparently. Oh, uh, no, it's okay. I, lo I lost that cookie like two days ago. <laughs> it's a little stale, but, you know, it's it's like a sugar cookie. Like, it's pretty basic. Tastes really good. Also, this is a really really good drawing it's um you really got the like what kind of beast in is that eyes. uh it's a pug a what uh it is a dog uh that has ran into a wall many times I'm selectively bred to run into walls is that no, the noise it makes do. now the pug 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 noise mm -hmm. uh, mostly, I've heard mostly that snoring creature. and 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 uh choking on its own spit uh, mm. they're they're really cute though like uh my my aunt used to breed pugs outside of um uh, anyway. anyway um it's still like i mean I, that that that's reggie um it's, it's my aunt's like youngest pug he's got like he's cross-eyed as you can tell and um he uh he's not very good at uh uh well i mean at anything really you know <laughs> mood um, I mean, uh, verily. Um, yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, thank you for coming on such short notice, and I hope that you are, uh, well and enjoy the festival. Uh, I look forward to fighting alongside you, Comrade Godfrey. It's going to be good. It's, uh, kind of... Almost brings us back to old times a little bit, though. Uh, I guess we won't be fighting too much against each other. Oh, I mean, if you want to duel afterwards, I would. I'd be fine for an exhibition match. I, I have to be honest, though. I think that you've got. I mean, you, you're you're a bit stockier than me. I would worry about being smote by you. <laughs> you're in good hands. Whew. I I would hate to be smitten uh, by by <laughs> such a large knight. <laughs> Talara. Um, I forgot that this was something I could do, but 
because I was already going to be going into work early this morning after the funeral. Um, I want to have spent one hour of that work when I finish a long rest, cooking a number of treats equal to my proficiency bonus that last eight hours that give temporary HP. So yeah, two. sounds good. You can totally do that before the. I have two fight. special cookies in my bag. <laughs> you got two? Oh, equal to yeah. proficiency. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Two special. And they cookies. give two temporary hit points. Fantastic. Uh, and with that, you're able to walk down into the town where you can see that there is already quite a um, quite a, a party already going on down there. Um, as as you make your way down, you can see that well. Colorful banners and paper decorations shaped like kingfishers decorate the village circle. Temporary stalls sell food and colorful crafts, and at the center of the circle, an ancient tree provides shade for happy picnickers. From a temporary stage, a band of local musicians brings a spirited song to a close as the mayor, um, Raven Uth Vogler, takes the stage. Welcome, friends, the mayor begins, raising her arms high. Welcome! To the Kingfisher Festival! Cheers and applause fill the circle. The mayor smiles widely. Today is a day of not only revelry, but also reflection. We are all here thanks to the courage of heroes who came before us. Let us honor our founders. Let us honor our family. And let us honor all those who can't be here to celebrate today. Enjoy your festival, Vogler. With good spirits, good times, and good friends. And look to the Kingfishers for good luck. She says, raising a finger to the Kingfisher statue in the center of the square. Energetic rounds of cheers follow the mayor's words. And with that, the festival is truly underway. Now, this festival is, for those of you who may have been to larger cities, is kind of quaint. There are a lot of people just kind of milling around, chatting loudly, uh, drinking out of these mobile carts and stalls that have set up. You can see Uncle, the um, the old man from this from the store uh, that you work at. The um, uh, not the Blue Monkey, uh, <laughs> the um, uh, the Fishbowl. Uh, Elthar is there, like selling his pies that you made that morning, and kind of grumbling to himself. Uh, but you can see that there's a little bit of a smile at the corner of his mouth when he thinks that nobody's looking. It's kind of off-brand for him to do anything else. Um, as you're wandering around, you can see that there are a number of people canoodling underneath that tree. Um, uh, a handsome pair of young men are kind of curled up in each other's embrace beneath the bough. Um, a family of three is trying to feed their daughter, um, who is staunchly refusing anything except for juice, rather loudly screaming for juice! Um, Several of the uh, of the people that you've met are there as well. You can see that uh, there's an old, incredibly ugly man in his 90s, but with still like a really stocky build, um, uh, standing behind a little stall that's selling like twisted wire jewelry. Um, a man that uh, Kellari you'd recognize as Jan Cornwallis. Um, uh, there is a middle-aged mountain dwarf uh, who is selling sheepskins and other yarns and, and, and like raw wool accessories um, there. There's um, a rather, uh, well, a rather loudish looking man who is hanging outside one of these like drink wagons, which are kind of like giant kegs on wheels, right? They look like almost like old fire trucks, but they're full of beer and other spirits. And there's this like, pretty big guy with a broken crooked nose uh green eyes and um and like kind of golden cascading fabio hair that doesn't quite fit his his general vibe um blotchy pink skin that says that he this guy drinks too much and probably gets sick way too much uh standing there going oh look another thing i think that you are watering this down mister the bartender is is quite uh, sir, that's, uh, that's nothing we do here. This is a celebration. I, I, I'm sorry that it's not to your liking. It's only a couple of copper pieces, though, and it, it, it's for, it's for cheer. I just want more. Um, you can see your brother, Kalara, sneaks around, uh, the side of a, uh, of a booth. And, uh, what's your passive perception, Kalara? Um... 
Perception. Uh, 14. Okay, that is exactly enough. Uh, you are going to see him nick an apple from a stall when nobody's looking. Uh, the rest Landon. of you are probably going to notice this as well. He got a 14 on a stealth roll. Um, and uh, he's going to try to sneak around, turning and bumping right into your party. Your little brother, who's about, what, 14 at this point? Oh, uh, I'm not sure That the was not particularly sneaky, Landon. They are, they are a copper what? coin. I was like, here. I, and I'll hold him a copper and, like... You forgot to pay for it. I was just bringing it to you, uh, Godfrey, oh, as a present. You. Oh, what's happening? Uh, here. Oh, well, thank you. Here, um, give it to uh, give it to the person at the stall. Uh, okay. Uh, I will. Thank you. <laughs> and he's gonna go. <laughs> he can give you one of those like false smiles as he slides it onto the onto the deck of the, or onto the side of the table. Um, there is quite a bit going on here. Like, what kind of things are you guys interested in doing? Um, before he goes away again once, Razira's just gonna just keep doing this until he learns his lesson. Um, but I rolled a 27 for sleight of hand to try and steal something back from him. Okay. Uh, you are oh, going Jesus. to find, uh, can you roll me percentiles? Yes. What'd you get? 47. Um, you are going to um, be able to um, kind of like reach into his pocket and 47? 47, yeah. Okay. Uh, you're going to pull like a little like metal canister out of his pocket. Um, it looks like kind of like um, kind of like a tin jar with like a little tin cap that you can go and work out but it's you hear something skittering inside of it as you hold it up it's about the size of a flask is it sealed uh you can pop it open if you want and something skittering inside of it but it's sealed you can hear it like thump she's gonna open it Okay, uh, a wolf spider is going to run out and like perch on your finger and like stare up at you, kind of like rub its face. Is Riz and just collecting pets? <laughs> can you make me an animal handling roll? I would love to. Animal handling. All right, come on, Dork Tells Dice. That is going to be a 17. The wolf spider looks up at you with all of its eyes and... and then goes back inside of the container. I'm going to... Uh, it's kind of creepy. Offer the apple to hmm. Arantiros because he seemed uh, interested in it and uh, look over at Kalara and was just like, is he doing that kind of stuff often? <sighs> yeah. I think he's just not thinking it through. Or not thinking how it could be perceived. Oh, he just hasn't caught, hasn't been caught enough. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. He gets his hand slapped hard enough, he'll figure it out. Or he'll just get better. I'm more worried about him trying against the wrong person and getting his hands slapped too hard. Mm. Mm. Most of everybody around here knows him and knows they can just catch him and make him work. Or tell us. And uh, we'll make him work. And no Jenny is only so trying just to small be properly scared is what you're saying. <laughs> Probably, or at least learn to ask and offer to work it off later. But of course, he's too young to really think about that. And he's just seeing it as fun. Hmm. Do they have games here at this fair? They do. 
you can see that there's even an archery contest over in the corner. Uh, there are actually a few contests that are set up. There is an archery contest. It's pretty mild. There aren't very many takers for it. Uh, the big thing, of course, the Kingfisher Festival, being Vogler, is a fishing village. There is a fishing contest you see in the corner that has a whole bunch of people flocking to it, including that mare that was speaking before. Um, she's quite striking, actually. Um, for those who aren't necessarily from this region, she's pretty tall, um, very, very dark skinned with her hair kind of braided into these long rows that hang down to her shoulders. And very young, to be honest, like very young, I'd say like maybe late 20s. Seems or a little 30s. fishy if you ask me. Uh, you can see that she wandered over toward the fishing uh, contest with a full uh, set of tackle with her. You might not want to try that one, Godfrey. The, it tends to attract all the obsessive ones. That one, on the other hand, and it's Godfrey. like a children's game of, like, <laughs> fishing. <clears throat> oh, Godfrey. Which, which... Yes? It... I'm pretty good with my hands. You think I could just, like, grab the fish, or was that not allowed? Are there teams in this fishing contest? It looks like it's just uh, looks like it's just independent, but it could be fun. One, one off. Um, I don't Clark, know if they have any you? rules about how to fish. Most people use a rod and, and line. You can see that there looks like a little rental stall where people are, well, not rental, but a little stall where people are being uh, handed out um some tackle and and like a rod to use see in my opinion it's a this is the kingfisher festival right so what's more like a kingfisher than catching it with your hands well i mean a kingfisher would catch it with its mouth yes but you know eh, close enough so if you really want to be that close closer than the rod i think quite often they tend to consider hands to be not sporting Riz is, go is is walking towards is walking towards the, the fishing thing. She's just like, yup, let's go. All right. Hey, so do you know how to swim? Are, are people going out on boats? What, or are they just fishing from the dock? I'm not going anywhere near the boats. Well, some of them would be on, on the dock, yes, but quite a few people do fish from boats. Do you all head down to the wharf to uh, to do some fishing? Uh, I'm actually going to point at the little kids one that uh, Clara was pointing to, and it's just like, well, well, they're doing the uh, festival. Do you want to sure. play that game? All right. Um, before you two kind of walk off, I'm just going to look at Clara and just say, um, if you see your brother doing anything else uh, that you would like him to stop, uh, if you let me know, I have a way that will scare him but not hurt him if you would like him to learn a lesson. I will keep that in mind. Thank you. And then I'm going to go uh, down down towards the wharf. Okay. Uh, as you pass, you'll see that there are a number of drink carts and things. So if anybody wants to get lubricated, there absolutely is a number of beverages. There's there's like pretty watered down, like like a nice wheat ale around here. Um, there's, a, there's a Pilsner, there's mead. Uh, there is someone who's trying to sell bottles of Finliolk which is kind of like a fermented yogurt beverage. Uh, and there are three ciders that are being sold right now out of big, big, big barrel kegs. Uh, looks hmm. like uh, a crisp apple, a sour apple, and a lingonberry. Ooh. I will take some sour apple cider. It is very sour, um, but not actually that sour for you. I'm pretty sure that most things that come from underground where you live are either bitter or sour. Yeah, probably. I don't think there's a lot of ambient carbohydrates to give sugar down there. Um, or a lot of sugars in the underdark. I'll try whatever this lingonberry is. <laughs> Not to be outdone by Hazel and their sourness. <laughs> the lingonberry is like, it's tart, but like pretty sweet. If you've, have you ever been to Ikea, Cal? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's every chance I have to use lingonberries. Oh, are we doing a competition to see who can... Uh who can be the most brave and drink the sourest thing. I mean, I thought you were going to the competition where you fish with your hands. <laughs> well, yes, I'm I, going to do that as well. But I was saying I, I would not be 
you know, I could I could drink some fermented yogurt and a sour cider at once. You should. And I bet okay. you I'll, could. I'll, I'll, oh, wow. I don't even need to dare you. OK. All right. At so once. yeah, you can do so. Um, it'll it'll cost you um, for, for that many. Uh, each bit of food and drink is going to cost you like. Honestly, um, about, about about three copper each for each drink. So not terribly much, considering a steel is a hundred of those. Nice. So you can easily have a um, a number of beverages. Uh, if you have more than your constitution modifier, let me know. In what if hour. our constitution modifier is plus zero? Uh, then that means if you have a second one, let me know. <laughs> the first is going to just be like, you're a little, uh, you're a little happy. You're a little happy. And then I'm not going to make you until you uh, definitely overdo it. Um, I I'm going to say that I, that Hazel probably has several, but I also have Dwarven Resilience, so I assume that even my Constitution you'll, Modifier you'll have advantage for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, heading down to the wharf, you can see that there is a full contingent of people down there as you're... You can be double fisting as you're going, Hazel. You can just be like... Yeah. Done. Honestly? Actually, yeah, I want, I want like, multiple flavors that I'm just like, mm, this one, mm, this one. <laughs> Honestly, so, like, what they have here, they've got, like, a Pilsner, they've got a really good mead, like, it's a really... Uh, a really strong one. They've also got like if you're looking. Do they for have the heart... drink that was recommended to me the night before? Oh, the Aquavit. Yeah. Um, it is so it's at a little stall. Uh, that is actually going to be five copper because it is quite a refined liquor. Um, so it's like a potato yeah. grain liquor, kind of a mix between like, I mean, grain liquor and vodka. It's like it's the bastard child of that. Uh, so you'll easily be able to like do that. Uh, cool. As yeah, well. I'll grab one of those. Uh, it is. It, it's strong like it's like it's the first thing that you drink that doesn't taste like juice Ooh, excellent. It actually, it's like it's like you've been drinking juice all day and you're like oh a 5% beer <laughs> fantastic um, so you'll be able to head down uh, at the at the water. You can see that a number of uh, a number of locals down there besides the uh, the mayor Derrett is down there and as you're coming like hey are you coming to fish? Grab your rods. If you didn't bring your own, uh, I brought my own. <laughs> Do you? Well, I was going to go and partake in the uh, the archery. Oh, verily, forsooth. Um, I'm going to go fish because fishing is uh, a gentleman's sport, and archery is, I guess, also a gentleman's sport. Ah, sorry. I wonder if I could win both. You can always try. There's plenty of time before the uh, before the events. Hmm. Nearby, you can hear. Are you hear... allowed to fish with an arrow? No. Uh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Elf. Mr. Elf. Uh, Mr. Mi... Hello. Who's it? Dwarf? Who's speaking? Nearby, you can see there's a little stall around with an old bald man sitting behind it. Yeah. You know? Are you here to get some? I got I got a poles and tackles for anybody who needs them. They're a little banged up, but they still work good. Uh, is that what you hunt fish with? Oh, absolutely. We got some of the best anglers in all the hinterlands. I see. And how does it work? Well, pretend um, that I've never fished before. The old man's gonna come out from behind the counter. Oh, yes. so you do is you you take you take one of our lures here. You put a you put a worm on it. And he goes, skewers oh. a worm on the hook. Oh, that's some, grotesque. Oh, we just need some live bait. I mean, that's just the circle of life, the circle of life. And then what you do is you wind up and you do you do the perfect cast and like this. And he kind of spins around and does a couple of moves and like mimes throwing it into the water. And you make sure it releases into the water and you. You just you 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 get all serene with it. Hmm. And uh, when the time so is these right, these creatures, these creatures that you impale on the end, breathe underwater. Well, they're they're. Uh, uh, the normal worms. Oh, the worms! I thought you were talking about the fish. I was wondering if you, you elves had never seen any fish. Um, oh, I'm not a big fan of killing things. 
Uh, well, the worms, uh, that the worms are food for, I mean, that they're, they're bait. Hmm. I see. Well, you all have fun with that. I'm going to go and check out this archery competition. Oh, we probably ain't good at it anyway, elves. And... Probably not. I can hear you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Big ears. Yes, uh -huh. they are. Thank you. Keep um, talking. Er I can still hear you. So, uh, uh, the rest of you, you looking for some rods? I got one. I got one for... Uh, I'm going to be just using my hands. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to do that off the dwarf or off the, off the, off the wharf, not the dwarf. <laughs> I mean, Sorry. excuse me. I mean, I hate, me. I hate, oh, Hazel, you could kind of like use a step. I could like, phew, I could jump I could up. fling you off. The I feel like that would here. be really disadvantageous for you. Or in Tiro's Ooh, Can back. I fish with the kender? Who's, are we, are, are we throwing Let her Riz? fish with the kender. <laughs> okay, I'm back in. <laughs> I mean, y'all can try whatever you'd like, but it prob probably won't get you no wins. But uh, sure, if you don't need a pole, that's fine. Um, Kalara, you come to fish? Oh, no, I'm just watching them. You're a loss. I'm going to pull rope out of my bag and <laughs> wrap it around this. <laughs> and I'll help. This is what you get when you have me play D and D. <laughs> I mean, fair, fair. Give it to me. Let's do it. You had you had last episode. You had a gnome thrower that I was not allowed to know about. So in this, this episode, my... you'll trust me. The gnome thrower is coming back. Okay, Good. so we're bringing it back. A we're bringing, fishing we're bringing we shall thrower. go. A fishing we shall go. We're okay. using Riz as bait. Stay tuned, <laughs> as we win. How about how about you, Sir Knight? Would you like a fishing pole? Oh well, uh, um, I'll look over at Clara. We're, weren't we going to try the uh, the other one, or do you do you want to do this? I don't mind watching you fish. I just suggest okay. that that one might be more your speed. Oh, she don't think much of you. All right, yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, bring the rod over here, please. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll win this Are competition. Are you good at handling your own rod, there, Godfrey? No, he doesn't have his own rod. We have to use this old man's. Now, are you are you able to do your own bait? Uh, I, I like that Kalara has yeah. successfully goaded everyone into doing the fishing competition. <laughs> are you, are you, now, Sir Not, have you done this before? You know how to put bait on a lure? Are you? I, I think being from a fishing village area that he probably does know how to do this. Might not have done it a lot, but uh, okay, I'm sure he's taking his If you need help, dude, like, I've been doing this my entire life. I'm happy to pass on some of my tips. No, I, uh, thank you, sir, but, uh, oh, you're I a master? Oh, okay. take the old man's tips. Come on. <laughs> he was kind enough to show me. I would be honored if you would, uh, pass on your wisdom. Well, I mean, you just gotta watch out, because you, you gotta, look, all I'm saying is you gotta be careful. While it's wiggling around, you don't want to get a little prick. And there, there's a lot what of you want to do. Swing. He, yeah, he, there's a lot he's of quite knowledgeable. He, he's a he's quite the masturbator right there. Well, I mean, well, I've when been you do look, it as much as him. <laughs> well, I don't mean to brag, but you know, uh, I've been hooking fish for years. I might say I'm the finest hooker in these parts. And so you're entering the competition too, I take it. Oh, well, I mean, I don't want to deny the mayor, but you know. You can't win every year. I understand. It's, I mean, you know, I always end up on top eventually. That reminds me, I need to take my ibuprofen. Uh, so y'all, <laughs> <laughs> he's obviously you hear that, years Godfrey? old. <laughs> he's named his rod ibuprofen. 
Okay, I'm going to give you an advantage. I... This was a banged up old rod, you say, and the the, the hook is all... Higgledy-piggledy. Higgledy-piggledy. I'm going to use my elvish magic, woo, to make it new again. And Orintiros is going to use mend <laughs> and make this rod and the hook as good as new. I'll, I'll allow it. I'll, I will allow that. <laughs> so you'll you'll whisper elven words of magic into the rod. Right. Turning old rod into fancy rod. Yeah. The rod seems to get straighter. It starts like straighter. lifting up. <laughs> Yeah, it gets stronger. The the fibers that were cracking and making it gets it bend. thicker, like girthy. I don't know. It's yeah. a really girthy rod. Is what I'm saying. Who's, who's there you go, you? Godfrey. The elven. Oh, I don't know special. if that's fair. Veined with its fishing line. Yeah. Well, like... they're going to be using me as a rod, and I, you know, I'm quite a big prick compared to your little prick there. Okay, you know what? I'm she using a the rod. <laughs> Tiny in stature, but big in. Attitude. Well, it's uh, good as good as new. Thank you for lending this, and thank you, Arantios. That's uh, I appreciate the help. Oh, don't worry about it. You better win. And on that note, Clara will pull her handkerchief out and tie it onto like some piece of Godfrey's armor of like, oh, and a favor for my good knight, for his success. Oh, I'm I, I know, I'm a win this. Know... That the witness. arm is where oh. you're supposed to do that, but I was envisioning you tying it to the rod, and that was just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I thought. Was I know, me too. I was oh. envisioning it as well. I was no, like, to the arm. And it's it's a nice yeah. little l white one with like some blue flowers embroidered on it or something. Okay, so now that you have a flag, um, <laughs> you can it's see a that favor. the. It's a lady's favor. A lady's favor. Um, all right, we'll so you honor can see it forever. You can see the people are beginning to divide up into teams on the side of the wharf, uh, and you are all called down. Um, so a fishing pole resting on her shoulder. Uh, Mayor Raven takes her place as one of the competitors on your side of the dock and beckons the rest of you to line up with her along. Uh, well, it's time to find out uh, who among us, uh, Kingfisher folk, uh, is the Fisher King. She says as she casts her line into the Vingird River. Uh, a couple of other competitors give the... Uh, Give the pawn a little uh, good dad oh, joke vibe. Oh, so we're looking for the Holy Grail. That's what we're doing. <laughs> uh, and then they'll cast their lines in as well. Um, so yeah, why don't we go ahead and do this? So the way that's going to work is, uh, so there's three 10 minute rounds. Uh, the character spends 10 minutes fishing. You'll roll the fish catch table to see if you get a bite. Uh, so it is a survival roll to catch it after that. Okay, okay, so it's a double it's a double roll. So roll to see if you get a bite, and then a roll to see if you if you're wise enough to catch it. Um, <laughs> a character has advantage if they brought their own fishing gear, which I will say that your magically enhanced rod will <laughs> give you. And I will give Razira a disadvantage. Oh my god, you guys are I, making me tear up from laughing too hard. I, get, I know. Can I roll that because Hazel is giving can, me the help action. Can I do the help action? <laughs> Can you do that? No, she gives a no, hand. you can't. You're just gonna like. <laughs> okay, and how does uh, determination work? Can I roll and before I decide it, like, can I see the result of the roll and before then I tell you if you succeed or not? Um, okay. So, uh, as you are doing this, um, whoever hurt them more, I could have this go really fun. Um, so, as you are lining up, so you're not going to be able to use determination on the if you get a bite check yeah uh it's only gonna but be I can on, on the, the survival you can on the survival um do you know that awesome. most of the things around these parks uh we're talking about like river eels carp um lots of carp it's mostly carp and eel around here although there is well there's a local legend but i think most of you wouldn't know about it um as you History. line up what i would like is everybody who's throwing poles into the water uh to give me their role to see if they have a fish uh, a fish catching. Uh, so what that is going to be is what we're going to do is um, what I will say is that Razira and Hazel, you can roll mm -hmm. flat on the catch roll, but you'll roll disadvantage okay. on the whether or not a fish comes to you because you're just <laughs> like dipping your head into the water. Okay. I'm yeah. I'm I'm basically well. I guess depending on where the the water is, I might just be punting. Uh, <laughs> into the just water. like like throwing into the her into the water. 
Essentially. Like, throwing me far away from everyone else. Yeah, so, so we're not disturbing everyone, everyone, everyone else, and I have her tied to a rope. I want to make sure yeah. that I position myself as far away from the two of them as possible. <laughs> I think that that's probably the wisest thing you've ever done in this campaign. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So what I would like you to do, uh, so whoever, uh, choose between the two of you who's going to be rolling the catch DC. I'm assuming that, uh, Godfrey, you're going to roll your D20 by yourself. That's just going to be a straight D20. Uh, Hazel and Razira, you're going to roll with disadvantage. So why don't you each roll and the lowest one is what happens. Sure. Okay. 17. 17. Okay. Like, and this is just a straight up D20 roll, right? 12 or, yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, I rolled an 18, so 12. 12, okay. So uh, there is a couple of moments people are chuckling about. Look at the Kendra's top knot. They're going to think that that's a professional lure. Do you think you can hear me? Can you hear me, Kender? I don't think you're going to get a bite like that. Uh, and as that happens, so that was 12. And what'd you get, Godfrey? It was 17. 17. Okay. Um, after about five minutes, both of you are going to get a bit of a bite. Um, yes. As as you do, I need both of you uh, to make me a survival check. Uh, you are going to make yours with advantage, um, Godfrey. And Razira, you're going to be able to roll yours flat. Or, yeah, you're the one that's actually grabbing. So I'll say you make the roll. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is survival wisdom. Okay. I'm going to say, gonna say it's, <laughs> I'm gonna say say it's it sur survival dexterity for you. Yeah. Because you're literally trying to grab it. Uh, I'm going to use like my to use... determination uh, because I I got the favor. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gung-ho right from the start. So that'll be a uh, 21. A 20. Okay, you absolutely are going to just, there's going to be a bite. Your line's going to start to pull and you're just going to kind of put your shoulder into it, set the hook and quickly reel up a full three foot long mature Quirest carp. Ooh. It's kind of shiny, uh, vaguely, uh, I don't describe what that looks like. I'm going to say that it has kind of like, kind of gray bronze scales, kind of like, like an armored cuirass. Uh, and it's going to, it's going to flop around for a bit. And yeah, you have a three foot carp that'll go toward Clara's your going to cheer from behind you. Uh, Razira, you're, you feel something begin to gnaw on your top knot. Uh, and it is a mature river eel. Do you make a get? Uh, do you make a grab for it? Yeah, with a natural twenty. You got a nat twenty. Oh, perfect. Uh, yes. You are going to be able to grab. Uh, reaching down, you're going to grab the river eel. Uh, it's a foot and a half long, and you are going to pull it out of the water. It's like half my body. <laughs> yep. Uh, so you and Hazel are going to pull up a mature river eel, and people are going to freak out at that point. They're like, "The Kender managed to catch one with her top knot." That's ridiculous. Hey, Thank you for the, for the throw. That was very helpful in the pull up. I don't know if I could have gotten the eel back up without that. Oh, I'm a little, a little damp now. Nice. All right, fantastic. All right, second round it is. Let's go back in to see who can get the most. You can see that the mayor is pulling up some some decent sized fish herself. She's quite the angler. Um, the way that the contest is going to work, you would have read in advance, is that we measure up your total length of fish at the end of it. Three rounds, the longest set of fish, tail to mouth, I guess, um, is going to win. Okay. All right. So uh, once again, give me that disadvantage roll to see if the fish bite at you, Robin and Jen. And Godfrey, give me your d20 roll. Six. Six. You'll get a little nibble. You'll get a little nibble. Make me a roll with, uh, with advantage from your magic rod. <laughs> I got a night. Uh, 14. Time. You got a what? 13. 1913? Okay. So, uh, now go ahead and make me a catch roll, Razira. All right. That's going to be uh, an 18. Uh, an 18. Uh, that is going to be enough. And Godfrey, you rolled what on your survival? Uh, 14. 14? Okay. Uh, so, you rolled a... What was your base DC for your base for the catch roll? It was... Six... Okay, you're gonna pull out a foot long little tiny river eel. Just enough for a snack, basically. Uh, Hazel, you and Ra Riz rolled a 13. So you yep. are going to get another mature ri river eel, another foot and a half. <laughs> Excellent. <sighs> Those eels, cool. they like your top knot. I am going Apparently. to spend a something good happens. 
to give you all advantage on this last cast. <laughs> Can I uh, play play oh, him God. out to give him bardic inspiration? Ah! You can you can use uh, a use of your bardic inspiration. Yeah, for the actual catch. So I, for I, uh... the to detect if you if a fish nibbles, um, Jen, you and Robin will both roll, and you'll take the higher of your roll. Godfrey, you'll roll the d twenty with advantage. Okay. And I can't use the inspiration on this one? Not on the, the whether one. or not the fish nibbles, okay. but on the catch, you can. I only got an uh, eight this time. 16. I also rolled an eight. Oh, hey. Okay. Yeah. An eight and eight and a 16? Yep. Sounds good. Um, so make me survival rolls, please. Uh, you will be able to add Orontiros's uh, D6 to that, I think it is at this level. I can will. I play, can I play him a little before he rolls? Can I? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, bear. I'm going to modify some, some lyrics here. So mm -hmm. Orontiros is going to shred on the his loot. He's going to be targeting his magical inspiration towards Godfrey, and he's going to be like, there are no losers deep underwater. <laughs> do, do not give up and lose in vain. And if you seek victory, all you need are instruments of pain. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Is this in Elvish? <laughs> yes. Excellent. And uh, if I don't know who speaks Elvish, but in his like deepest voice as possible, and uh, yeah, he's gonna inspire him to. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna inspire him to to catch the most metal of fish. Okay, you know what? You know what, Godfrey? I want you to do me a favor. Uh, I okay. want you. I want you to. I want you to roll me one more d twenty. A six? A six? Okay. 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 Um, all right. Um, so, uh, you go ahead and uh, give me uh, give me your survival roll, and uh, Razira, give me your survival roll. It's going to be a 16. I'm going to spend my determination to do 18. 23, okay. thanks to 23. the inspiration. Okay, I'm going to spend that, and... <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, as you as you do this, you are going to uh, Razir. You're going to wrap your hands around a another tiny a tiny cuirass carp, a smaller version of what Godfrey caught earlier. This is about a foot long, and you're going to pull it out of the water. It's going at you, making the fish face. Uh, and Godfrey, as the loot music is playing, uh, you are going to manage to pull with your rod uh, and pluck out of the water. Uh, you rolled an eighteen. Uh, for the survival or for the uh, for the original catch it was a the original catch was a 16 16 uh, so you are going to get a uh, uh, another mature cuirest carp of another three feet long um, and as you are plucking it out of the water it's it's struggling it's fighting with you as you're plucking it out of the water uh, there is a sudden swell of of water beneath the waves or well, beneath the ripples of the river I should say uh, and suddenly, an immense fish is going to explode out of the water and bite onto your catch. I need you to make me a strength saving throw. Oh, shit. This is uh, an eight foot long carp. All right. Uh, do, 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 so Solara, that's eight. you and several of the other fishermen will go <gasps> as you recognize <gasps> Benabog the line breaker, <laughs> a legendary fish of the region. Um, I'm going to spend that uh, new determination I just got back. Yep. Okay. And uh, uh, that would be a 22. A 22, uh, that is enough. So you are not pulled off the dock. I would like you to make me a contested athletics roll. So basically we're doing a, we're doing a wrestle at this point to try to reel it in. Uh, so uh, here is the deal. If you roll a one or a two on your dice, your, your line is going to snap. That is going to go up every round by two points until one of us wins. Oh God, okay. Okay, we need three successes to win. That 20. Balls. <laughs> oh, I got a nat four. The power of love. <laughs> the power of love. The power of boners. Go Godfrey. He knows how okay. to handle his rod. 
vigorously, violently. Calamnia's ass knows how to handle his rod. So, all right, so you plant your feet on the dock side, people drop their rods and start cheering for you, and you're gonna brace yourself and pull this fish out of the water. The line is going to start, you see where it's so taut, uh, and Orantiris, you're still like jamming on your, on your loot. Um, you can see where the line should be snapping. This should be breaking like the cord of a guitar pushed to its limit, and you are just watching, but your mending spell is still holding it together, and you're just, you're feeling sweat drip down your brow as you're like, mending, mending, mending. Again, go work, 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 work. Uh, and then there is suddenly the sound of this immense eight foot long fish slapping onto the side of the dock, and people lose their flipping fishing minds. <laughs> um, I think you won there, Godfrey. I'll hold up the uh, the Ooh. favor. Claire is like, cheering wildly in the background. Like, hold it up proudly. Okay. Um, people are going to just like lose their freaking minds. That means that you, what, got like w 11? Are you at 14 inches or 14 feet for the entire thing? Um, eight feet plus three feet does, plus three feet? Uh, eight, three. Um, well, does the one that was the bait for this count? No. No? Okay, then. <laughs> it got eaten. 12, because I got a one okay. one foot eel, a three foot carp, and this thing. And you said it was that's, eight. That's still going to beat uh, everybody, including Mara Raven, who managed to catch about seven feet. Um, the next is a villager named named Cobb, who was able to catch five feet. Um, and um, people are going to just freak out. Um at the at the end of this there's going to be like they're going to kind of pull you aside there's a big crowd of people enough that you can see that just in the corner um an old an older kind of grumpy man that you'll recognize immediately as being the same toe heel toe headed um stock that that uh uh Baracus the younger or pardon me, Bacarus the Younger uh, is Barkus. Uh, Bacarus the Younger is uh, descended from his obviously father is drinking heavily and uh, kind of criticizing the other the other crew. Uh, but he, what you were doing is so ridiculous. He didn't he didn't even bother to do, bother to approach you. Just saying. Good. Um, <laughs> and uh, as as he sees you approach, he's just going to just be complaining. Non-stop. But this is this is an absolute farce. Such a idiocy. In the middle of nowhere, these bumpkins I don't have anything better to do with their time than to kind of just you know he's doing his thing. Um, so um, each of the winners is going to uh, to receive a prize as you are kind of dragged up. Uh, what was your total length, Razira and Hazel? So we had, I think, four. Yeah, because we had foot and a half, foot and a half, and then foot. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're not going to win a prize from that. You will get to keep the fish, which is good. We get an honorable uh, mention for our weird ass technique. Yeah. So people which are going to buy to work you at all. Uh, yeah. So people are going to buy you each a. Uh, each a, a tankard of mead. Awesome. Nice. Yep. Um, they're they're gonna like uh, some people are gonna take a couple of sketches of Godfrey and his fish, um, and then Godfrey, the mayor is gonna come up to you and just clap you hard on the shoulder. Not enough to make you move or anything, because you're much larger than she is. Holy crow! That was incredible. I thought that guy would never get caught. Kind of ashamed though. Well. Something great to feed everybody tonight. Godfrey, the legend killer. <laughs> we could put it back. Make me a persuasion roll. Can I somebody else can try sneak again. up and persuade and let it uh, free? Fourteen. Fourteen? <laughs> uh is it Cal, go ahead. Give Orantiros a uh, a stealth roll. Uh, it will be with disadvantage because a lot of people are watching in this. Um, but if you do it, you got it. Oh, 
we could put it back. I mean, then there's hope somebody else could catch it again in the future and the legend continues, right? It could get bigger. It's it could true. be three kinders tall. Yeah, I, I would avoid swimming in there. Fifteen? Fifteen is going to be enough that in the middle of it you can get close enough. This fish is still on the side of the wharf. Uh, you'll be able to just kind of go eh, and roll it <laughs> off. <laughs> Well, I mean, the legend should sploosh. Whoops. <laughs> oh, man. You'll hear a bunch of groans from the assembled persons. <laughs> well, I guess In Elven, you'll hear our interiors be like, swim free, mighty legend. <laughs> no. I'll look back and it's like, well, I guess I'm down to four feet then. Nah, we all saw what you did. So, don't worry. You'll get him back sometime. Actually, I have a present for you. For having actually caught him, whether or not you kept him, take this. And she's going to hand you a an exceptionally well-crafted fishing pole carved with fing kingfishers that must be worth at least 50 gold pieces or 50 steel coins. Wow. That's... That's incredible detail that's on that. I know, right? And this is... Um, don't worry. You'll bring it back and you'll slay the beast yet. Hey, Godfrey, I'm here to buy you cider. Yeah, I want to buy you something too. Come on, let's have drinks over here. Tell me what it was like to wrestle that thing. Uh, it, uh, He's sure. starting to collect yeah. his own stories. <laughs> One of them's going <laughs> to lean in and say, Hey, Godfrey, you ever wrestled that thing? And kind of gesture over at Kalara. Hey, hey, no, that's just inappropriate. Oh, hey, sorry. Just just joking around, man. Just joking around. Oh, don't do it again. Oh, okay. Make me an intimidation roll. Oh, he's not good at that. Um, oh, actually, not too bad. Uh, unskilled. So let's see here. That would be a 15. He's going to back the hell up. It's just some punk with a big Adam's apple and like, and nothing else that's memorable about him besides like his sunburned cheeks. He's going to throw his hand. Oh, sorry, man. Sorry, man. Just make it a joke. Just make it a joke. All right, let's grab a drink. Okay, cool. Uh, and with that, uh, the rest of you can enjoy the rest of your days. I think some of you are going to an archery contest. Um, it's going to be best of three uh, on that one. Uh, there's a bunch of people there, mostly kids and teenagers. You can actually see the Kalara's younger brother is there, Landon. Uh, it's three copper pieces for uh, for a set of three arrows to enter you in. If anybody wants to do that, they absolutely can. Whoa, we're actually competing against an elf, huh? Well, just remember, when I beat you, you'll have like 500 more years to feel upset about it, right? Yes. <laughs> Fourteen-year-old, and unfortunately, the you'll, creatures on the planet. Unfortunately, you'll probably forget about it by tomorrow. So I'll go easy on you. Don't. I'm awesome. He's gonna take Thanks. aim and he's gonna fire. Uh, so give me three shots and see what you get. He has a plus one to this. Oh, he's actually a pretty good shot with like two of these arrows. While we're waiting, um, Riz is gonna try and search through her, ba her bag to try and find Godfrey, like some sort of like fake crown or something. Maybe a real crown if she's lucky. But she's gonna feel like she's like, I'm I feel like there was one point when I found a crown or even a paper crown. Razir is gonna try and find a crown in her bag sure. to give Godfrey. Right. Go ahead, make me make me a Kender bag check. All right, so uh, taking your shots, Orantiros, what do you got there? Okay, for uh, bar with my noobness. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is moment. you're gonna take your dexterity plus your yep. dexterity mod plus your um, uh, plus your proficiency bonus. Proficiency. So, that's what I was looking for. So your total <laughs> bonus should be um, your dex is plus four, right? Yes. So add six to every roll. All right. I have rolled. A 13, okay. a 16, and a 20 before Perfect. the bonuses. So you so, are before the bonuses. Man. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so that 16 is going to be a 19, which is going to mean that you're going to fire one directly onto the edge of the inner bullseye ring. 
Like it's going to be like half in, half out, like almost a perfect, per oh, it's, hell, it's actually going to be inside the bowl, so, uh, but like all, just a little off center. Isn't a 16 uh, actually going to be like 22? Oh, you're right. Like 13. So his, his it would be 19, be 22, oh, okay. and 26. Yeah. Um, that's so with the other two, you're actually like, he does a good job. I'm telling you, this kid, he's got a four on his first one. He kind of gets a little nervous watching you next to him. He kind of goes, we did you. the second one, he's going to get a 17 and an 18. He's like peppering around the bullseye. He's doing real good. And you almost feel bad when you pump one right beneath the bullseye, pump a second right in the bullseye and pump a third right through the arrow that you shot second. Yes. Robin Hooding. <laughs> and people are going to lose their minds at this point watching an elf do basically arrow magic at this point um a a comely uh, a comely young lass is going to approach you um and um is going to kind of like kind of lean over excuse me sir elf she's um actually you'll recognize her as um the the fortune teller from last night's funeral oh she's late dear. teens uh very goldish skin uh kind of bleached out gray hair that kind of clumps a bit into like these big thick curls oh you were the mystic i still am. the um, mystic from last night the fortune teller do you want me to tell your fortune I didn't get a chance to do that. Are you running a booth? I was thinking that you needed this and she'll reach up and we'll kind of like um, put a, a little crown of intertwined like flowers on your head. King of the Archers. I, I like this. Oh, my mistake. It looks like I put a little bit of mistletoe wrapped in that. Oh, uh, is that bad luck? Not for you. Uh, she's going to attempt to kiss you. Hoop, bad touch. Ha! Huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. Uh, you are you can you can dodge out of the way. Absolutely. Uh, you can smell. There's a little bit of like fermented yogurt on her on her breath as she comes forward. She's quite. Uh, she's a little saucy right now. Um, and you'll be able just to like slide out of the way. <laughs> I've oh. been practicing for <laughs> I've been practicing this for this moment my entire traveling life well good luck kid and he I'll throw the bow that I was using at uh the oh hey uh, yeah teenager. absolutely uh oh hey uh here here's your you, you, uh, your, your prize you, you're obviously one man uh, sir uh, do, uh my lord um the, the head of the archery competition, basically this real dad looking guy. Like there's no other way to describe him. He looks, he's kind of, he's a triangular shaped dad with a big a bit of a mead gut. Uh, looks kind of like the dad from The Incredibles. <laughs> kind of wanders over like with tiny ass and legs and uh, here, it's uh, it's it's not much, but uh, a bronzed arrow for you. Yeah, oh. just to remember the contest. Oh, why thank you. Uh, th th thank you for blessing my booth. I'm I'm Craig. I'm just a normal, like a local hunter. But I mean, I could say an elf used my bow now. <laughs> That's right. You blessed it with elf magic. Everything hey. that I touch turns to uh, steel. That you can say sense. the same thing about me. Says the girl that tried to kiss you. Sorry about Matilda. She's been a little, little. She's having a. Uh, yeah. Good job. Good job. Oh, good job. for for humans, is is she having a midlife crisis? I, how old? You don't live very long, so she's middle age, right? I mean, she's like, a, she's, yeah. Uh, sure, sure, yeah. What do you like? Is it like thirty, twenty-five? How long do you live? I'm 42. Oh, village elder. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. Um. How old are How old are you? Uh, me too. Well, it's been nice meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
All right. Is there anything else that anybody else wants to do at the festival before it is time to um, to head into uh, the the mock battle? Um, um, I just want to make sure that that asswipe from the other night is not causing any problems. <laughs> he appears to be absent. Cool. Good. His dad is definitely causing a bit of a ruckus, but um, just fine. mostly just saying like fucking rubes. Yeah, that, that's fine. I just, it, I didn't want to have to light someone's house on fire, you know? So. <laughs> There's time. There's time. <laughs> there is time. There absolutely is time. I think Kal Kalar is going to browse the booths and like have something to drink and uh, get a snack. All right. Uh, anybody Godfrey. Who, uh... Oh, okay. uh, Godfrey wants to try and uh, um, see if uh, Levna, Levna will be joining the um, the re reenactment. Uh, she's sa standing nearby the mead wagon uh, with a with a big mug in her hand, a big pewter one, going, "Hey, Godfrey, my squire." Oh, come over there, yes, sir. Little 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 meaty. It's a nice shield. The old goat left it to you, huh? Look at uh, you. Not just. Not just me. The, well, you're the, the one holding well. it. Oh, well, it's everybody for... else's as well. You participating in the thing? Yeah. Um. Um. Uh. Oh, what was uh, her name again? Um. Back with the B. Becklin. Uh, uh, Dame Becklin was uh, hoping that you would as well. I mean, yeah, I guess I could. Uh, it's no skin off my nose. Um, man, I did not sleep well last night. How, uh, how'd you sleep? Did you, uh, catch up with anybody? Uh, no, I, I, I slept fine, thank you. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. I, honestly, these beds, I, they're too soft. I can't get used to them. Yeah, I told, uh, um, um, Becklin, that uh, you had a uh, personal manner to attend to. Uh, she noticed your absence. Yeah, I uh, I think I might have burned a bridge or two last night, but uh, hey, it's uh, it's all fine, all fine and dandy. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm not. It was fun, but I mean, we're moving on. I, I I'm not putting roots down. Not like some of us. You know, I'm pretty sure the castle is going to have to retire one of these days. They'll need another knight to watch that, uh, that keep of hers. You think so? Well, I mean, why do you think she's there? She's off on retirement right now. That's, uh, that's a post-retirement gig. Her twilight year career. Well, I guess I'd actually have to, uh, no longer be a squire then in order to get that position unless, uh, unless you were taking it. Mm, I don't want it. I want to be where the action is, which is why I can't wait till we get out of here and keep heading east. Maybe there's What's actually going? something at the city. That's not too bad out here, though. You gotta admit, that, it's been fun. Yeah, if your idea of fun is boring. I don't know. Well, but you didn't see that fish I caught. Oh, how big was it? Uh, I, I can't... It was eight feet. It was uh, some legend that they have in there, though. It, uh, the elf, like... Um, Arantiros, Mr. Elf, he uh, kicked it back into the water. Sure, so there's no evidence of it, right, Mr. Elf? I... I got an arrow... Congratulations. <laughs> you caught an arrow. I won an arrow. Oh. The, the mayor gave me this fishing rod as a trophy. Oh, that's a nice, that, nice rod. I've never been much for fishing myself, so. I'm here for the drinking. Let's have another drink and... You'll hear a horn blowing toward High Hill. Finish your drink. One more for the road. One more for the road. I need to find a donkey. 
I would like uh, Razira, please do me a favor uh, and make me a an investigation roll to look for the donkey stand. All right. Um, I guess the town squires the square is pretty busy. It's a town circle, and it's very busy. They said town square. No, they said town circle. Did they? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm I know. I've been, I've been catching myself the entire night. <laughs> um, investigation is a seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. So yeah, you'll be able to find where uh, where Rickon is. Uh, Rickon is this like this dude in his fifties with like real like unkempt hair, uh, super gray, um, sitting there having an argument with one of his donkeys. I don't care exactly what you think you're doing. You can't go around eating people's shoes. Uh, 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 excuse me. Yeah. Sir? Uh, he turns and looks at you. Ah, Rick, don't take anything out of my stall, you kinder. I don't take things just fine to me. And I was wondering if I could borrow your donkey for the for the reenactment. My donkey? What do you want with my donkey? I want a height advantage. A height advantage? <laughs> well, that's cheating then, ain't it? I'm sure there were lots of mounted cavalry at the reenactment. It would just be playing along even more. Fine, I'll let you take my... Uh, uh, I'll let you take this, and then, and then Precious gets hurt, and then you... You, uh, you, you need to put a deposit down. I think 10 steel coins. That donkey's not worth 10 steel coins. You know that. No. Um, well. Are you trying to rob me blind there, sir? Make me a persuasion roll. I shall. That's a dork tales. So 24. Mm, not blind, just nearsighted. <laughs> Trying to rob you nearsighted, but I suppose you're a pretty wily one. All right, tell you what, you wanna you wanna take Precious out for a bit? I don't see any reason why she can't get some exercise. Uh, you 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 go get me for what? It take cost you six copper pieces to rent her for the day. You can just go get me a big, big jar of, fr of film yolk over there. All right, I'll be right back. Now She'll watch this. run over. She ain't gonna come back with film yolk. He'll turn around and you're already there with the film yolk. Yep. Well, all right, this is Precious. Hee haw. <laughs> well, hello, Precious. Aren't you just Precious? Precious has a little bow in her hair. It's actually quite adorable. <gasps> Amazing. You think that he likes this donkey will... more than he likes anybody else in the world. That's fair. I promise I'll be very good with her. It's just it's just play acting after all. Yep, taint no problem. She's been trained to be at the pet and zoo anyway, so she shouldn't buck you too hard. That would just be extra fun. You're a weird one. I like it. Cheers. I like you too, sir. Cheers. Uh, and he's going to drink, and you'll hear... The second of three calls to get out there. Yeah. All right, and uh, astride your um, your your lovely steed, um, with a little bow in its hair, a little like 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 the donkey tassel, like the donkey curl mm -hmm. in the front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. You and your donkey are going to waddle out into the field, uh, making your way to High Hill along with the rest of your party, ready to go participate in the mock battle. And I think with that, we're going to take a quick break, everybody. So, hey, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Hello, welcome back. This is the part of the program where we talk to the chat. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, so we're going to be doing our draw for Norse Foundry in just a couple minutes. So this is your last chance. You need to be here when we draw, and you need to hit exclamation mark Norse. Uh, not nice, but like Norse uh, in the chat. Uh, and uh, you'll have to win a set of dice uh, that are going to be fantabulous. Metal dice, including a Chonker D20, if you live in the U.S. Uh, if you live outside the U.S., you'll be getting a gift certificate from our friends at Norse Foundry. So that is done. Uh, so hey guys, how's how's your third episode of Call of the Dragon Lance going for you? No, it seems a bit fishy. Seems a bit fishy? <laughs> no. But, um, I just bumped my mic, so can you tell me if my sound got You just uh, up? tilt it back a bit like... Eh. No, the other way? How about now? Uh, other way? Oh, okay. Back, back. Yeah, so you get back, back? so more of the talking surface is pointed toward you. Yeah, that, that's fair. Yes. I think that's, that's pretty good. That's okay, pretty good. cool. I just Everybody punched think... it, so I was like, hmm, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you could probably move it a little closer, but like it's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, here's, here's good. Uh, especially because you'll be yelling in a few minutes, probably. Um, yes, so, sir. still no dragons or lances. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. They, I, I, okay, I'm going to be honest. Dork Tales is, is like a full-time gig. I don't make that much money, so I had to get my dragons and lances on Wish.com. So they're on their way. <laughs> I'm going to get it. It's going to be It's going to be a... Like uh, months from now. Is I mean, that what draconians really are? Yeah, they're wish, just wish. Dragons off of Wish. Wish. <laughs> that explains why there's so many of them, too. It's true. The trick is to order them when like there's a there's like a boat blocking a canal and then you get refunded and then the original show up so you get doubles. Yeah, that's yeah. why there's so many draconians. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. When you order lances and then you have Pure later to deliver them. That's just the worst. Oh. The lances in the mail. Come in one of those big tubes. Um, so, yeah, hey, folks, nice. uh, this is the part of the program where we talk to you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you want us to chat about, go ahead and just pop it in the chat right now. If you're watching on YouTube later, hello, YouTube. We love you very much. You're very handsome or attractive or beautiful, whatever you whatever you need to feel like we love you. You know, uh, hit the subscribe button, though. Hit the subscribe button um, because I like seeing those numbers go up because we've gained like a ton of followers on, on Twitch and a lot of subs on YouTube, which is really lovely. Uh, I, what, 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 what fun, interesting things do we have? Do we have, uh, a gecko and a toothpick? Yeah, that's, I love that you can just give geckos or like chameleons things and just hold them. Uh, so hello YouTube. Oh, yeah. It is Can wonderful chill. to see you there. Um, what well, else? I suppose interesting is that this is the last Dragon Lights game of 2022. This is the yeah. second to last game of 2022. We have Requiem yeah. tomorrow, and that's it. Holy oh, crap. Yeah. Ooh but so far, so good. I kind of enjoyed I enjoy the the heavy RP start to this game. Yeah, that reminds I me was, of Witch Light a bit more. I, I think it's pretty good. I know that... I hope that people stick with us on YouTube, because we got that big spike in the first episode. Episode 0 has been insanely popular, which is weird. Um, uh, episode uh, two is doing not too badly for is episode it? two. Yeah, I, I just checked. It's um, it's like actually quite good. So go and watch it a hundred times, everybody. Each. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Open you're up the hundred tabs and then hit play. If you're looking and for other things. Thank you very things. much, Jay, for a wonderful. Yeah, album. yeah, it's at two K for um for five days. I can't believe Session Zero has 12k views, though. That's that's ridiculous. Um, so that's how does it feel to be the most for popular Zero. Dragonlance stream on the internet? If you're looking for uh, other things from Dork Tales that uh, uh, I think personally are were really enjoyable, mm -hmm. I wasn't in them, but um, uh, Reign of Emerus, which is a homebrew one that uh, Kelly did, and uh, uh, his uh, run through of Witchlight. Which I was really good. Nether Deep's really good. The module's a bit up and down, but I think if you can if you can suck it up and get to like the like we're getting into the real good part of the module now, and I think it was all good. But like this is my favorite part. Rhyme of the Frostman was really really good too, particularly the beginning. Um, and watch Spelljammer. Watch Spelljammer's hilarious. Spelljammer is like the best module I've seen from Wizards of the Coast ever. Light of Xerxes. It's this, this little baby module with like each episode's like two hours of gameplay and it's just so much fun to stream because it's ridiculous. Um, but uh, I am I'm very excited to say that uh, the end of the year is coming up. Thank you so much for being with us on this journey as we have returned to Kryn. Um, if you like that kind of stuff, uh, what Chris was saying, uh, Reign of Emerys is a great place to hop into our homebrew world. 
Um, we have a few other games that are set in that are really long running run one, the Shards of Nern, which is like a hundred episode, 103 episodes at this point. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty wonderful. Um, but it's, it's a lot to, it's, it's like critical role length at this point. So we can see why you might shy away from that a bit. Um, it's what we started with. It's what we started and, with. And there, early production value is, uh, it's it's real cute rough. to look at you can watch our learning curve go like this <laughs> um you got a bunch of great stuff coming in the new year from us uh so if you're just coming in chat just letting you know right now that we're just on a quick five minute break uh that we'll be wrapping up in, in about five minutes uh if check the pin to see how you can enter to win a set of dice uh if you live in the u.s you get the dice if you live outside the u.s you get a gift certificate from our friends at norse foundry uh by uh typing exclamation mark norse right now um so um, we got a bunch of really cool stuff coming in the new year. I, I've been trying to figure out my schedule because it is it is nightmarish at the best of days, given the number of games we run. Uh, but Netherdeep is in its final phase. When Netherdeep ends, we're going back to having Shards of Nern on a bi-weekly basis. Um, and then we are on temporary break from Strix. Well, the players are from on break from Strixhaven, uh, but the the character the 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 dm is not so chris is going to see you printing that with some guest characters uh in january so if you're on the patreon you'll get advance notice of that uh jen has been recruited to run mage the ascension the technocracy which is going to run once a month um for the patreon and, and we get to do our our uh, planning meeting on the first so i get to start the year with mage which is exciting <laughs> nice it's going to be great um and then there are uh there are two new homebrew games that are going to be starting up in the new year um, one of them is going to be starting in April, uh, and that is going to be a game set in our kind of Grecian Isles, uh, inspired area called Arcos. Um, it is, uh, a fantastic campaign that I've been working on for a while. It's got some new mechanics that I'm really excited to try out, uh, called Destined Roles. Uh, yes, Robin. Um, quick question from, uh, I see in the chat is saying, yeah. um, they're really intimidated by shards. Would you recommend a starting point that's maybe a bit later that could still like understand the plot and and get it a bit if you're if you want to try and catch up well, a bit if you're a little bit intimidated? Any season openers do have a recap. Yep, I do, do. I do record a recap. I think honestly, that watching shards, a rough idea. Watching early shards is like watching early Supernatural. Like, there's only four good episodes in season one of Supernatural. Um, in shards, you only need like five or six episodes of the first couple seasons to really yeah. get it. Early shards has really bad quality, but we were just, we didn't know what the hell we were doing and we were just winging it. And it was so funny, honestly, like, I think we had a lot of good, like little trope reversals happening right in the very beginning. So I'd say yeah, there's some but, very but solid ones saying start at dog run bridge. I would say watch the first episode for fun until you can't stand it anymore. Then go watch the the dome of Count, Count Mount Doom, Doom Von, Von Doom. Doom. <laughs> yeah, go watch that because that's when you meet Farah uh, at the end of that, and then she got retconned a bit because I was like, uh, this character's gonna stick around. Um, but yeah, started the, the dog. Snowman one arc. was pretty good too. I think so, that's where we met Bear Murder. Oh, at Thorn Bear Murder, yeah. Oh god, that was a really good part. Mm, Thorn Bear Murder is great. Um, I would say that if you're going to, I'm gonna check our, I'm gonna check our playlist right now, real quick. Uh, Shards of Nern. Oh. Uh, check the playlist real quick. Season. If you start in season one, uh, I would say start at episode. Oh man, some of these are real. Oh god, these are real. Thundercats real themed game. Oh wow. That I would say back. start at if you started season one, start at episode nine, the danger of steep hollow, um, because then you get the steep hollow arc, which is real fun. Uh, but if you're looking to just get the most out of it, I'd say jump into season, jump into season three and start at the beginning, because that's when you guys get the grand duchess. Um, and then you guys go to the Fantasy Islands. You Battle of the Bands was pretty damn good. Battle, the, I mean, there's a lot of really good episodes. Um, I'd say start in season three or season four, but if you really must, I would say start in the Azabek, uh, the Azabek arc, which starts at uh, 311, uh, which is where they go to the Eternal City of Elves and things happen. You can 
honestly skip into the measure of elves if you really want to, which is 315. And uh, it, it's a thing. 114 was really good, too, because that's legal battles. Legal battles. Where we first so came good. across the tribesmen. The, the legal tribesmen. Oh, God. I OK, can I just can I read out some titles from these episodes real quick? Just because they're my I forgot how much fun I have naming these. OK. So we've got the Grand Duchess, which is just introducing that. We've got Fantasy Islands. We've got, uh, I'm just reading through season three. Uh, the Happiest Place on Elos. We've got What Lies Beneath, which is a serious episode. The Old Dark, which is a serious episode. Dragonfire, which is the end of a serious episode. Uh, Reaper's Grove. A Night at Wyadale Keep. Uh, pumpkin, sp uh, pumpkin Spite Lattes. Uh, Waking the Dead. Uh, the Eternal City. The Walls of Azebeck, Echoes of the Past, History, blah, 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 Measure of Elves, Star of Akeel, World in the Clouds, The Magical School Fuss, um, and The Goblin of Fire, um, Gith Yankee Go Home, uh, Ill Will Hunting, Down the Hole, Mine Over Matter, um, A Giant Problem. Um, oh god, some of these are real good. Honestly, episode 18 of season 1 also is really good, because that's where you meet the Kaneen for the first time in the Strays oh, of Dog Run Bridge. Great. They're... And they're amazing. God, some of these episode titles are, let's see, Droctoberfest, The Beer Necessities, Werewolves in the Mists, Hut Topic, um, Dragon's Lair, like, because it's in a town called Yenin, Mine, 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 Bloomin' Dungeon, um, The Great Escape, Fork in the Road, which is literally about a fork in the road, Fetch Quest, which is a surprise. Love is in the Air, which is about a psychedelic BDSM festival. Tunnel Vision, which is in a drow tunnel. The Wise Guy, Nothing Ventured, Shards of Nern, Civil Serpents. Um, oh, come on. Due South. Oh, Nazarul. Tomb Eternal. Pyramid Scheme. Tomb Service. Um, Roan in the Deep End. Oh, man, some of these are bad. I love it. Riddle Me This, uh, Call of the Wild with a Y, uh, My Life in Ruins and Troubled Water. Did I have, like, really good names in Season 4? Hold on. Fork in the Road, that was the, one, the Spa Day one, wasn't it? D no, that was a different one. Uh, the Fork in the Road was with the Giants and, like, the Dancing Catamus. Hmm. For I the thought Horde. it was right after, the two, like, the... The Real Dragon Heist. Ishar stuff. I need more punny titles for the future. Uh, anyway, so folks, that's just me reading off my own my own stuff. I, there's there's nothing quite as as dumb as when you are going back um, at your own stuff as a writer and you're like, I'm funny. I do it all the time when I'm writing like fiction and I go back and I'm like, huh, that was actually that was good. <laughs> I'm entertaining. Right. It's so, so funny when you look at dumb stuff you did and you're like, wow, that's what I think about getting older. One of these days when, when, when I'm, when my time comes and I'm, I'm out I'm, and I'm finally uh, dead and gone, I'm going to miss me because I'm funny. <laughs> also, because I've been, I've been on and off writing fiction for a very long time. I can also look back, maybe not actually read it, but I can remember stuff I would write as a child. I'm like, Ooh, I was dumb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got better. My, I brought this up earlier. The first story that I ever wrote, like on PC, like actually type wrote, was a Dragonlance story. It was a complete ripoff of Chronicles One, and um, man, it was it was great. It was it was not great. It was not okay, great. the first major thing I wrote was fan fiction for um, a particular uh, series that perhaps shall not be named. Um, for reasons, but it was, uh, eh. um, it was a m ridiculous, like musical thing. I don't know. It was bizarre. Uh, just so insane. Nice. Um, yeah. Well, uh, so folks, I think that it is time for us to do our draw because Jen and I are cheesy writers um, and that has been established. So folks, this is your last chance right now. You have one minute from the point that I say you hear these words to type exclamation mark Norse. You must be in the chat in order to receive these dice. They are metal dice. You get your choice between a couple of different sets. Um, you will get your choice between um, and 
Christine will send you a message with this, but it is the um, the lycanthro lyca lycanthropy silver or lycanthrope silver. I forget which one it is specifically. Silver, uh, brass dragon, bifrost, or the other one which I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, but you'll be able to pick one of those and our friends from Norse Foundry will provide that. So go ahead and, uh, oh God, your first was a Power Ranger fiction where mechs were based on Greek myths. That feels like it was one of their nice. seasons. It probably was. <laughs> or like their it seasons It does happen. feel like it could have been this a Power Ranger This time were Greek season. myths. Last this time were this. Um, so yeah, go, go subscribe, smash bells. Um, also, if two more of you join our patreon robin down there no down there my finger got cut off down there has to run uh the radiant citadel once a month yes you so uh join the patreon all right christine it's drum roll time it's been a minute right. let's find out who and wins. just a reminder that you will have to if you win you'll have to give me an email address that we can contact you at to get more details um and whether or not you are in the u.s and All right, without let's do further it. ado, Danny right. is rising. Danny rising. Danny Congratulations. Congratulations. Congrats. Congrats, Danny rising. Are you here? Please post in the chat that you are here and uh, you will get these dice. Otherwise, if you, we don't hear from you in about two or three Congratulations. We're going to redraw. So is Danny rising? Oh, Danny's rising. Hello. I will just send a quick tag at them hey yeah there you yeah you there you, you are one you danny awesome or is it dan is rising no it's danny rising i'm not sure congrats welcome are you also i think danny rising i think it looks like danny rising because there's like no danny i rising. another s Ooh, subscribe to us nice good job I love it when it's I love it when it's people that uh, are here. So, folks, thank you so much. Um, this is going to be our last uh, free giveaway for the campaign, unless Norse Foundry wants to give us a bunch more stuff. Which, hey, Eric, give us more stuff um, if you want to. So, Lady Liliana is going to reach out. Danny, perfect. Thank you, Danny. Um, and uh, we're going to be uh, hopping back into the game in just one second. I hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Does anybody else have any other questions, comments, concerns? Um, I will say that if you want to watch our homebrew stuff over on YouTube you don't necessarily need to watch all of it to understand. Like I try to keep it segmented. There are in jokes in every game that we run. Um, like there are some in jokes from 10 years ago in some of the games that we run. Yeah, before it, we even no times when it's just a watching, group of friends doing stuff, right? Like, so, and we will always, if you stick around during the chat portions, I will usually explain the joke so that you will no, unless it spoils the plot. Like in Mage, where the moment I said Thomas Klein, I could see like butts puckering. I just like mm. <laughs> Which I which I had to ask you afterwards because it was one of those moments where I was like, I have no idea. Ha <laughs> help, I'm out. Just loop. a bubble. Yep. Just a baby just role a player. Oh. Uh, that's good. So yeah, go binge watch it all. Um a lot of it's like super, super good. I, I would say if you watch it, there are like the earlier stuff is a bit rocky. Um, there are a couple there where I'm like, it's a little rocky because like either just time constraints or learning a couple of the early ones. I was also like completing a master's and working full time. So I was a little scattered at times, but I think uh, I think you'll enjoy them and uh, join our discord where you can talk about stuff and ask for advice on games. Um, and it's a great place to have you. So we'd love to have you join the discord. Uh, just have nice respectable conversations be cool people come join us it's it's free so memes you know, are take, lit the meme the lit the games memes are lit are met. on that note fit, rich oh, let games let's, let's crit all right don't be shit everybody crack your backs flex your pecs my upper body hurts so much from work the gym yesterday <laughs> oh i'm going back to the gym next week jen after the new year's because i went I back set, to doing push-ups <laughs> i set an arbitrary try date. and do it i was like yes i can still do two sets of 12 so nice. i might be seeing you it was on the great because it cracked there. my back which was amazing because i needed that so bad oh all right so folks thank you so much for tuning in let's head back into dragon lance shadow of the dragon queen i think i got the smudge off I need to have LASIK. All right. All of the Shadow Queen. <laughs> All right. Make a roll for exercise chart. Do it, Krista. Do it. 
Oh, also, Krista, send me a PM in a little bit because the person we were talking about is interested. So you should grab. Who just gave me all these subs? Well, thank Whoa. you, actually, oh, Bard. Actually, actually Bard. Bard. Thank you Ooh. so much. Oh, you're. you're I feel really... inspired. Right. I, feel inspired. I think we thank all you. should get inspiration from that. I, I don't think so. But we do. I think Our that... characters I don't. You do. You do. Yeah. yeah. So true. You're, when you're at work tomorrow, you'll have inspiration. So thank you, actually, Barb. That's very lovely for the subs. Oh, I could use inspiration and like. I could also use at work inspiration. I could too. I was just oh so my God. dead on my feet today. But uh, I just, I just. Just a um, couple more days and I can tell my doctor that, no, this isn't working and I need to do something else. <laughs> I hope, I hope Yay. it goes well for you. Well, at least you get a couple days off from, from game. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's no mage this Saturday. So, hey. It's true. Thanks. Yeah. There's no yards. Find some technocracy stuff. Yes, yes. Good, good. I'm playing the same guy, so his, I got to remember Knock that those voice technocrats like. down. <laughs> it's true. All right, so folks, let's head back into game. Ready? Five, four, three. Hello, and welcome back to Shadow of the Dragon Queen here on Dork Tales. As you prepare for the mock battle, you all find yourselves assembling there in the village circle. Razir is riding her donkey. The rest of you are traveling alongside where you can see that um, the militia has kind of formed a, a rather large circle. Mayor Raven is tootling on a horn, giving a third final call to assemble the group. Uh, and the militia then kind of leads this haphazard parade, parade of people who are hooting and hollering and moving through the town. A drink wagon kind of going behind it with one kind of like knocked wheel. Um, and it's quite a celebratory event. Uh, as you are going there, you're going to be hearing some things. Orantiris, you're going to be kind of like pulling this in kind of just sponge-like with your elf ADD. That's like, can you believe we're actually fighting alongside an elf? I know, I never would have thought I'd fight alongside an elf. Or a dwarf. I wonder if the dwarf felt that way. It's a wizard, too. Dwarves can't be wizards, you fool. That's obviously a sorcerer. What's the difference? I don't know. I just say things sometimes. With that, you begin to move alongside. Um, the other gather, the other participants are gathering at High Hill, uh, and as you make your way there, um, Derrett is going to kind of sidle up next to you. Hey, ah, uh, wonderful to be, uh, to be fighting the good fight with you, the young squire says, kind of running a hand through his long black hair. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so, uh, here. Uh, I brought you this, verily. And he's going to hand each of you a um, a little, like, kind of, like, soft-topped spear. Kind of, um, it's, it's like this blunted, padded spear tip that's full of, like, straw and hay. Oh, here. Zero's Great. Just gonna full -on joust with it. Uh, as he approaches you, he's going to kneel and go, Sir Knight, aboard your steed, a jousting lance for you. <laughs> oh! I've always wanted to try this. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Sir Godfrey, a spear for you. Uh, Lady Kalara, a spear for you. Uh, for the sorcerer, I brought you a spear. Thank you. We're kind of mostly just spears and like, I have like a wooden sword. <laughs> yep. Uh, and uh, or Orontiros. Uh, I bring you this magic lance that looks identical to the other spears because secrets. Hmm. Magical elven lance. I mean, it's Thank made you. of wood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I heard your song that you were singing down when when the the the, the when uh, uh, Benabog was pulled out of the river. That was. Most ostentatious? Uh, Ostentate? No. Auspicious. Auspicious? Yeah. It was most austere. Uh, I've muchly liked it. It was. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, it was. It I'm, was I'm good. trying out. I'm trying out a new. Uh, a new type of um, music that the dwarves of old used to uh, 
used to partake in long before the the cataclysm. Whoa. That's very Back in deep. the metal mines. They, they were very deep. The deep elves. The deep dwarves. They were oh, all so friends, you're... and they were all metal together. The dwarves are pretty metal. So you two are like best friends. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Most bodacious. Um, uh, I should continue handing out uh, the spears, but I look forward to seeing you on the battlefield. Can I? Uh, All right. Can I also take a wooden sword? Uh, yeah, absolutely, my friend. Um, they're pretty soft. Like they're soft wood. It's just he'll like pull his sword and go and watch it go. It's just basically plywood. It's enough to give someone like a smack on the ass. Uh, but it's 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 honestly what it's going to be. It's going to be several reeds that have been kind of bound together enough that you can nice. give like quite a smack. Uh, but it's not even as strong as like um, like a kendo shinai, mm -hmm. if you know what that is. Yep. Yeah. So enough you'll leave a welt. Uh, yeah, I can totally, uh, absolutely, my 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 chum. Um, and to, uh, where should we, uh, or where should I leave my swords? Uh, I mean, I guess just like don't draw it. Oh, okay, that works. Um, or, you know, just leave it like just the, in the bushes, maybe. Uh, you know, and just like, won't draw it. Yeah, right. Like, I mean, you could be trusted. I mean, like it's gonna. It's gonna be just a lot of fun. It only takes like a half hour, but it's you know it's nice, and then we all have drinks together. And I, I, I honestly, I want to ask these mercenaries for like a lot of, well, I don't know, stories about like the world, because I should honestly ask. I didn't know that dwarves and elves liked each other. I thought they were like enemies because one's tall and one's short. I mean, that's not why. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I didn't see. I, I, uh, uh, I, I should remember to always watch, um, uh, to watch my eye lines. Uh, for my betters may be shorter than me. Yeah, short folk and, and tall folk can be good friends. advice. Well, I know I am friends with so many people from around. Everyone she meets, that I can tell. All right. It's true. I do have that way of. Uh, opening people up and getting them to uh to enjoy me i may have slightly forceful personality as some people say i think Espen was mm. one of the first people to tell me that as well he said you got a forceful personality riz but that's like good some people need a push exactly you seem like quite enjoyable um i'm gonna hand out uh, i'll be back with your sword uh just a moment uh and with that he will um He'll go and grab your equipment. Now, as you're walking, you are going to make your way to the base of High Hill. Passing through the woods and fields, Vogler's parade of militia members and reenactment spectators finally reaches High Hill. The grassy slope is spotted with trees and crumbled stone fencing. Near the base, several dozen soldiers in matching armor stand in even formation. The contrast is striking between these mercenaries of the Ironclad Regiment and Vogler's militia, with you know their mismatched armor, um, crooked helmets, but it doesn't really do anything to dampen the spirits of those assembled for the climactic reenactment of the, of the Kingfisher Festival. Uh, nearby, you can see that uh, Levna is kind of hanging out, clutching one of these spears, kind of giving it like the old prod hey rookie try not to poke anyone's eye out okay with your majestic rod i think i know how to handle this all right um the parade continues to follow a trail up to the top of the hill and mayor raven and cudgel, cudgel iron smile will meet and they will they chat for a moment um and uh before the um before the spectators break up uh she'll just smile and remind everybody of the basic rules um and uh wish everyone best of luck down the hill or down the hill i should say um besides that you um you're all kind of milling around and the mayor approaches and says all right defenders so the way it's going to work is pretty basic what we are going to do is um 
we are going to rush. Um, uh, we are going to, uh, well, rush up the hill, and they're going to rush up the west side, and we're going to meet in the middle. We're going to have a mock fight. Okay, try not to aim for any faces, okay? We, nobody wants to lose an eye. Nobody wants to get a broken tooth or something like that. The weapon shouldn't do that, but some people get zealous. Luckily, though, you are the most dangerous people here. Because those are trained soldiers. They know how to take a hit and they know how to give one. So, none of them are going to accidentally harm you. At least we're hoping not. So, uh, be be I was going to say, before we uh, st start, there are a couple of things I want to do that. <laughs> oh, sure. You've got a. So, we're going to be starting in about five minutes. And I'll be going around, I'll be participating, but also acting as a judge. We also have a couple of other people we've hired as judges. Um, so it should not be much of a problem. Um, and uh, please, reminder, those of you who are traveling with some of your equipment, don't draw it. This is a friendly game. Okay? Fantastic. Um... We got about five minutes before we're going to start. There will be a bugle blow, and then we'll begin. So Clara has some sort of like padded staff. Yep, you have a uh, you have a padded spear. Nice. The spear does zero damage. That's good because she's going to try and trip everybody. <laughs> that, that it can absolutely do. Um, I'm going to. Uh cast long strider on the donkey oh that's beautiful <laughs> i love you Jen, so much <laughs> i just, love just you wait for the second so half much. of this <laughs> oh god so i get to do that um once per long rest without spending a spell slot so i'm gonna do that oh yeah you do don't you i do um and just before because so that lasts for an hour robin um, and it's uh, ten, plus 10 feet to your speed, or to the donkey's speed, technically. Nice. The donkey goes 40 feet around, so it will go 50 feet and around now. There you go. Like <laughs> That's double what I can go. Uh <laughs> it's a dwarven donkey. Yeah. Um, and then, like, kind of right as the bugle goes, I'm going to, uh, I want to uh, cast Minor Illusion to turn uh, Riz's spear in into a lance just for, like, a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't right. do anything it just looks cool <laughs> oh i love okay. you so, so much. <laughs> wait it it'll looks obviously like a real be lens. like a kind of fake still right like it'll be glowing yeah kind yeah of... okay yeah it's still gonna look fake it's just gonna be like <laughs> longer than the spear chris is chris is having a great day man okay do you want me to find you a donkey mini I will quickly find you a donkey. Uh, maybe, probably. See if you can cast away. cantrip. As much as There's a mini on there. for mule for roll twenty. If you like, I don't there, like okay. if like I'll, searching I'll Google. I'll, I'll, I use. I got it. Yeah, I I'm using mule stats because there's no donkey in D and D well, apparently. Uh, well done, Hazel. Well done. Oh no, they've got no pictures. Oh, sorry. Darn. I'll make sure to uh, keep the uh, the favor visible, visibly attached to like uh, it was the arm earlier. Yeah. You know, for good luck. Nice. All right. Is there anything else that you are all doing in prep? Doesn't appear so. Stretching. <laughs> No. Uh, oh, I um pretend that I'm unfamiliar with spell spells. <laughs> um, how do cantrips work, and how often can one cast once per round them? So you just can't cast unlimited. them. Unlimited. Um, yeah, so they're unlimited. Uh, you can cast them. Um, you just can't cast them alongside most spells in a turn. So if you, you can only cast one yeah. spell or cantrip per turn that requires a, that uses a bonus action and one that requires a normal action. Reaction cantrips like shield or uh, silvery barbs can be cast at any time that you are reacting to somebody, but only once until your next turn refreshes your actions. 
So most cantrips are full actions just because they're pretty great. Um, so if you want to team that up with any other spell, it'll have to be uh, a spell that only uses a bonus action. Okay, I see that here now. Thanks. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to get ready to cast Bless um, once the fight actually starts because it only lasts for a minute. Nice. And I would be targeting, I think, Ruzira, Godfrey, and Orontiros with it. Nice. So it can hit up to three. All right. So on that note, um, as you're preparing to do that, um, the different people... Um, uh, the different people around the way will begin milling around, getting ready, uh, doing their stretches. Um, Derrett's going to kind of drag you all over and trying to get you in line so that you're like, you know, ready to go and hop in when the time is right. Uh, and uh, the mayor and Cudgel and other spectators uh, are going to walk to a near watch or move over to a nearby vantage place to watch. And you're about 30 minutes away from the town right now, so there are quite a few n number of um, of assembled like viewers kind of enjoying this from quite a distance. And as they do, the militia takes up its position atop High Hill, the same hill Salomnic troops held centuries ago. They face the mercenaries of the Ironclad Regiment at the base of the hill, arrayed in the forces, arrayed as the forces of Ishtar once were. Some of them are like growling and snarling. And um, although this event is only a reenactment, there's a tingle of excitement that fills the field, and some of you are actually going to feel it in the tips of your fingers as well, like this. This kind of bubbling feeling, this effervescent excitement in the base of your belly. Somewhere along the line, a random reenactor will hoot and holler, Let's send those Ishtarian rats running! Yeah! A moment later, <laughs> a moment later a, trumple, a trumpet bat last signals the start of the battle. For Ishtar! yells the mercenary's leader, a tall half-ogre among several mounted soldiers. The Makistarian troops assault the hill. Around you, the Vogler militia charges to meet them. As this happens, there is going to be a, a just a rush of motion all around you as the, um, as the hill is just covered in moving arms and armor and all of that and I would like everyone here as you're looking around to make me a perception check okay uh, 14 no we're sorry 15 15 18 16 16 22 orange Twenty-two as well. Okay, Razira and Orontiris, as you are riding down the hill, the donkey at the forefront, you are going to see that sun is glinting off of the mercenary spear tips, and their half-orc leader is leader is gesturing with a steel axe. They're armed. How far away are we? <clears throat> you are rushing down into the fray at this point. The two sides about to collide. Uh, I think Razir is going to turn back and go, They're chanting! They have steel! And with that, the two sides are going to collide in this sudden sound of cacophonous metal on metal. The unexpected sound of metal clashing on armor rings across the field, silencing the laughter and melodramatic boasts. A ribbon of red splashes over the grassy hill, followed by shocked screams. Any pretense of reenactment shatters. High Hill is a site of true battle once more. Within moments, all around you, armed mercenaries attack unprepared villagers that can do nothing but fight for their lives. And with that, we are going to switch to our battle map. Ooh. All right, folks, we are going to be explaining a new mechanic for this campaign. This is called the fray. If you look at the map right now, those of you listening on podcast later may have trouble looking at the map, but trust me, it's there. Um, you are going to see that there is a main field that is surrounded by kind of fire. The fire that surrounds the border of the field is called the fray. If you attempt to leave or move through the fray in any capacity, it is not only um, difficult terrain, which means that it costs double movement, you are going to suffer some type of damage, penalty, or problem as you go through it. 
On top of that, there are battlefield events that happen on initiative count zero of every round to represent the artistic and, and chaotic, or I should say chaotic, factors of war, errant arrows, things like that that are coming into the field. Okay? Um, as cool. you are... As you are looking around, I would like everyone here to do me a favor and make me an initiative roll. Uh, when you roll your initiative, roll, add your dexterity modifier, and put your result in our private chat. Uh, I will roll for Levna. Uh, of course she rolls a three. Uh, okay. And... Okay. All right, so... Uh, going through the initiative, I have I have Hazel at the top. I have followed by uh, followed by Kalara, followed by a tie between Orontiros and Razira, uh, followed by uh, let's see one, two. Three, followed by Godfrey, followed by Levna, who is present as well. Um, as this occurs, you are going to see that there is just this, this chaos everywhere. The sound of people screaming, the sound of horses tearing through the mud, tearing through the field uh, in search of something to fight something to bleed people are dying all around you uh in the distance um you are going to see uh one of the um one of the town's known brawlers that that man with the golden hair uh take a sword directly to the side of the face uh cleaving his cheek open satin red stream is now covered in his own blood as he tries to defend himself uh with the broken haft of a spear out in the distance now the all of you are going to see that you have little opportunity to aid the, the villagers um, as suddenly as this happens, uh, you are all going to be kind of find yourselves um, separated in the chaos from everyone else and there you will see that three riders uh, atop war horses are going to be tearing up the southwest edge of the battlefield and aiming themselves at you. Um, above you, you can see that Derrett and Levna are um, kind of right on the edge of where a member of the Vogler militia is trying to fight off a, uh, a member of, uh, of the mercenaries. Uh, Derrett is running up to aid in that, armed with only his, uh, only his wooden sword as well. Now with this, combat will begin. Hazel, it is your turn. These riders are aiming directly at you with their horse speed. They should be able to reach you before long. Cool. Uh, Firebolt. Firebolt. All right. Uh, are you aiming it at the lead rider? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Make me an attack roll. It's a range of 120 feet, assuming they're probably in the Absolutely. <laughs> in the you're inside there. of 120 feet. Uh, from where you are standing right now, they are 40 feet away diagonally. Nice. Okay. okay, make me an attack roll. Hold on, trying to... Yeah, my sheet's not loading, so I can't see my bonus just yet. <laughs> uh, you on, are an 18 charisma, so your bonus is plus six. Plus six, yeah, okay. Uh, 24. A 24 is absolutely going to be a hit. Uh, you raise your hand, calling out, how do you cast the spell? Um... So yeah, this one's verbal and magic. Uh, I think at this point, it's just me yelling, <laughs> honestly. Um, like, essentially just like the power of the moon rushing through me because uh, I'm freaked out. And uh, yeah. Okay. Sorcerer, uh, that is actually so going to hit. Roll me damage. That's a D10. Me. Fire from the dwarf. What? Did you just, by the power of the moon... Yeah. Yes, I absolutely did. <laughs> uh, Elven magic. Do I add anything to it? Uh, on Firebolt, I don't believe you... I no, I don't think so. Most spells don't usually add anything unless like you take stuff and Yeah, it's 1d10 fire damage. Add stuff. That's what I thought. Cool. Uh, four. Four points of fire damage. All right, the first one is going to be uh, to be struck uh, by your flame, and it's going to kind of heat his armor, and he's going to shoot. Kill them! Gut them! The dwarf's mine! 
uh, and they're going to keep rushing forward. Kalara, it is your turn, unless Hazel, would you like to do anything else? Uh, there is like a wall kind of bisecting the field there, and a cart. Both will give you partial cover. Uh, yeah, I'll dive behind a cart. Sounds good. You can easily move over behind the cart. Uh, all right, so that is your movement. Kalara, you are next, and then Orantiros and Razira are on deck. Okay. Um, I think as part of this whole thing, Kalara is going to shriek a little bit oh, out of absolutely. shock and fear. Um, but I don't think she could leave Derek to fight by himself. She's going to try and run over. And she can okay. do it. And she's okay. going to try and use... Uh, I think she might pick up a rock and fling it to do the help action. Sounds good. Something to distract the guy so that Derek can have a chance at like, maybe knocking him out with a, the wood stick he's holding. It's not going to do much, but Derek, what Derek will do on his turn is he's going to try to do a tackle. Because at least he's been trained on how to, like, fist fight. All right, so um, I'll, so I'll yeah. say that you can... Yep, you can grant the help action to him from that distance. Uh, so rushing up there. Uh, anything else you want to do with your turn, Kalara? There's not much else I can do at this point, I think. All right, sounds good. So, so I think I'll hold off because I don't have any weapon on me. I don't have an actual staff. I have like this. Yeah, unless you brought your, would you have brought your magic staff with you? No, because that thing's pretty freaking big. Okay, so it's hidden somewhere at your house. Yeah, um, I think so. It wouldn't make sense you, for this. That means you don't have a, a, a divine focus, though. But do I need it for spellcasting? For some, yeah. Okay. So do you think you would have brought it with you just kind of wrapped up? Um, well, I don't know. Having a six-foot thing, like, you're holding on to doesn't make a ton of sense if nobody's expecting you to have it. Hmm, that's fair. Um, you could have left it in a bush nearby, like was suggested with Godfrey's stuff. That's true. This is true. We'll go with that. Um. Okay. All right. Is that it for you? Yeah. So I guess that would just affect like my channel divinities, or it would be anything where you needed to use your holy symbol. Okay. All right. So uh, going down the list, Oren. Uh, Orantiros or Azira, whoever wants to go first. I'm good to go. I know what I want to do. If you're thinking still, um, Cal, or if you want to go first, go for it. Feel free. Uh, so these three horsemen are charging Probably at us. Right. Yep. Uh, the one in the front is the one that was hit by the firebolt. Mm -hmm. I think now's a... Now might be a good time to uh, test out one's silvery barbs. Okay, so Silvery Barbs is a reaction, so when, when they make an attack, you can do it to steal their luck, basically. Oh, so I can wait to yeah. cast this? So you you cast okay. reaction spells in reaction to somebody else doing an action. So basically, I'll roll. Oh, I and, see there. And, but Silvery Barbs is even worse, because you get to find out if I... you get to, I get to say what I rolled before you decide to use it. So... Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, in that case, then I will. Oh, I will. Um, pull out my real bow, mm -hmm. and uh, real arrow, and um, you know what? Get the one that's on fire. The one that's on fire sounds good to me. Uh, go ahead and uh, make me an attack roll. That's going to be your dexterity and proficiency bonus, plus a d20. All right. 22. That is absolutely going to be a hit. Roll me damage. So that's your dexterity plus your bow damage, which is a short bow. So D6 plus dex. Nine. 
nine. All right, uh, Cal, congratulations. Tell me how you want this to go. Notching an arrow. Oh. Notching an arrow and having just won the archery tournament and been... I'm not one to kill, but... I, the idea that anyone from this small town could fall upon whatever malice that is happening right here and enrages him so, and without thinking and following, following the dwarf's lead, he just notches an arrow, aims to where the horse is going to be, and in the midst of patting himself off, receives an arrow in his heart. He's going to tumble off of his horse. The horse is going to uh, is going to buck the corpse off and continue running into the fray. One is dead. Uh, res would you like to do any movement, Orenteros? Uh, let's see. So there's a. Cart it looks like they're coming up upon that cart. They're going to be coming along the road. Yeah, they're not going to try to jump the wall. Okay, so I see the others are behind us there. Mm -hmm. I will go up behind the cart. So that maybe right, good. right there. Okay, so you'll have partial cover. That works for me. All right. So with that, Razira, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Um, how bad does the situation look with, um, I honestly can't I want to say Dirk because it's Dirk, but it's not. It's Dirk. Dermot? Dermot? Dermot. Uh, not Dermot. Derrit. That's not, you got it wrong. It's Derrit. 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 Oh my god. Derrit uh, has not Derrit acted yet. He rolled, he rolled low initiative, but he's up there with Levna, or at least with Levna and Kalara. So you think that they okay. probably are going to be okay, but you'll find out. Okay, the horses. Yeah. All right. So, um, Looking at this, it looks like there is a small stone wall between us and the horse. There is a stone s that winds up the hill, yeah. Um. Okay. Um, yeah. I have my cunning actions now to do this. Okay, so. And don't forget um, that you can use it to aim if you have a ranged attack. Oh, I forgot about that. So the the rule for that is that you cannot move while you're aiming, but you gain advantage and may sneak attack at range. Okay, okay. Um, How does aiming work? I was uh, gonna... It's If you're a rogue, you can do it, basically. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Ooh, my range is 20 feet. Um. So... Does it count if the donkey moves for me uh, for the, moving? So, frame? mountain combat, the way that it works is the, the donkey you may take the movement action, dash action, uh, or defense action, uh, basically, on its turn, unaffected okay. by you. Okay. So it may move. Uh, it, it basically will replace your movement. Or just... Okay, the donkey yeah, will replace my movement. Cool. Um... So you can absolutely uh, ride your donkey forward and then like use your sling because I know you have a sling on you because you're a kender yeah. you always will to to hurl a mm. rock at them or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that that's definitely a good idea. Um, that's probably the smart idea. I wanted to like what well, initially had planned, but I don't think there's enough like holding in action. You can just do one thing. Um, but basically I want to like wait on the wall and wait, like jump up on the wall and wait till they rode by to try and like jump on and stab him. That's fair. But you know what? Honestly, and the thing is you wouldn't be able, you wouldn't be able to use your cunning action to aim because you, there was movement involved. So that's yeah, what you were asking exactly. for and I just I glossed over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you want to do that and then like rush up to the wall and use your action to like wait, you could do so. Yeah, I'll hold, I'll hold my movement to then basically like launch and so you'll you'll move down to the wall yep razira okay. will move down to the wall on the donkey okay. um so you'll get off the action. wall yep hold my hold my action um okay well can that's I gonna be perfect though because it is uh now Ooh, going... could i take the bonus action my my cunning action to hide behind the wall or they probably saw me running up but where on the wall 
Uh, it's so fine if I, not. You could use your cunning action to hide, yes. Yeah. All right, I will try and hide to try and right. actually make me a, sneak make me a stealth roll with... Uh, uh, you know what? Make it flat. There's enough chaos that the wall's going to break okay. line of sight. Yeah. Um, 21 for my stealth. 21. They are not going to see that. Uh, or at least rider number two isn't. Rider number two is going to make it around the corner charging, and that is when you are going to be able to hit him with your jump. Uh, make me an attack roll. Perfect. Do I get advantage because I hid? Yep. Uh, yeah. But do me one favor first. Make me an acrobatics roll to jump on. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say DC 15. All right. Um, I'm going to spend my inspiration from this okay. spin because I rolled a four. Okay. You can reroll that. Go ahead. Um, That is much better. That's going to be a... Uh... That is going to be a 22. Okay, so taking a flying leap off the wall, you're going to find yourself on the back of the, the horse, uh, kind of riding behind the rider, and you may make me your attack roll with advantage. All right, that is going to be... um, That's going to be a 19 to hit. That's going to be a hit. Roll me damage with sneak attack. Yeah. Sneak attack. 1d4 and 1... D6 at this point, I believe, still. Yes, 1D6. All right, that is going to be a total of 10 points of damage. Okay, you are going to, like, just start, like, what are you using as a weapon? Your rapier? Uh, my, um, I figured with this short distance, uh, I pulled my dagger, not my Sounds rapier. Sounds good. You're I just going to be, you're going to start, like, puncturing. Uh, the side of him, he is going to shriek in rage uh, and is going to, oh God, you're on his back. You're stabbing him almost to death. Uh, you're so close and you're on his back. He's going to take a swing at you with disadvantage. All right. And he can't find the angle to get you. He rolled a two and a four. <laughs> Um, but yes. he's going to continue riding because the horse is going to do its thing. Uh, yeah. And with 60 feet, he's going to be basically riding right up on Godfrey. Uh, the horseman behind him is going to continue riding as well. So uh, he is going to ride up alongside his compatriot uh, and is going to try to free him of Razira and is going to aim a shot at Razira, who is on the back of a horse. Uh, that is going to be a spear attack. That is going to be... Okay, uh, Orantiros, I'm going to uh, I'm going to help you because, Cal, this is your first time playing D&D, &D, really. Uh, I rolled a nat 20. So if you want to use silvery barbs right now... Now is uh, the time. Now is the time. Perhaps now yes. is the time. Okay. Yes, please. So, so I'm going to take the D20. I'm going to reroll it. Uh, that now becomes a 15. Does that still hit you? That is just my AC, but it's not a crit. So but thank it's not you. a crit. Um, all right. And so I believe you gain. You can advantage. grant advantage to someone. Even yourself. Oh. Who is? Godfrey has not acted, and oh, Levna has not acted. But mm -hmm. you, the person has a, can use the advantage anytime in the next minute. Oh well. Looking at where we oh oh um Godfrey he's right there he's right there he's right in front okay so Godfrey you'll have advantage on any roll you choose to make in the next minute um Elven and magic. Uh, so uh, <laughs> Razira this this mercenary is going to ride up and stab you in the back that is going to be seven points of piercing damage. Uh, as you are perforating, stabbing into the liver of this guy in front of you, just like stab, 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 John Wick style, um, you're yep. going to feel a sudden burst of pain as a spear drives into your side from behind. Wretched fucking Kender. Uh, and Godfrey, it is now your turn. What would you like to do? Um, you can see that spear almost hit you in the spine, but there was a brief like like gust of wind that blew it out of the way and a bunch of leaves just kind of pushed it. it leaves that from? now swirl around Godfrey. Um, I'm going to uh, 
look back as Clara goes back the other way. Just like, Cl ah, stay together and fall back. And uh, we'll uh, um, stab, try and stab this guy, or take out my real sword, drop, dropping the fake one, mm -hmm. and stab this guy with advantage from this weird elven magic. Elven magic. Ooh. Elven magic. Um, where's my character sheet here? Ooh, uh, so that would be a 15. Uh, 15 is going to be just enough to miss. Ooh. Is that a, on your attack roll? Did you add bless? Oh. 17. That is enough to hit. Right. I forgot about bless. Thank oh, you. We were actually, I know because you said you said you were going to do it at the beginning of battle, so I didn't know if that actually happened. We put in the chat. Yeah, basically I said that I just didn't want to do it during the talking, that it was going to happen. Mm-hmm when I okay. when we first started going towards starting actual battle. Okay, I just didn't know. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that actually happened. So cool. I have too 10. many things over my screen, so I didn't notice. I but. bless nice. the D4 to everything for the next minute, unless you lose concentration, right? Every attack or save, Perfect. not steal checks. That sounds great. All right, the, so... Uh, is it damage. the words one thing, and then it's gone? Nope, nope. It's, it refreshes every round. No, it's for the next round. minute. So 10 rounds. It's, so it's every free. attack oh, roll you make. So, oh, okay. Well, thank you. Thank didn't you. Need I it for that hit earlier. I didn't so. need it. <laughs> All right. So, Godfrey, uh, that was enough to hit. Roll me damage. That was 10. 10 damage. How do you want to do this? You draw your um, sword? Yeah, I'm going to draw my sword. Um, you said the uh, spear was coming at me, and uh, I'll uh, um, deflect it, uh, the spear back with the shield, and when I'm saying, like, um, stay together and fall back, and just, like, stab him, like, just straight up, and uh, kind of pull him down off of the horse. You will pull him uh, down off the horse. Uh, there is now a, a, a war horse that is not being ridden there. I mean, I could scoot forward. <laughs> That's true. That's never mind. It is being ridden by Razira. Yeah. You know what? You've upgraded. <laughs> yep, I've upgraded from just up. It'll end with dragons. You know it will end with a dragon. I'm going to. Uh, the question donkey. is, is how well can Razira steer it? Considering she probably can't reach the stirrups. <laughs> is there uh, there uh, enough room for two on there? The, yeah, She's there's like enough room for a Kender. <laughs> saddle. Enough room for a Kender and Godfrey. And. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, I will spend five feet of movement to yep. get up on this horse because I Sounds don't have good. to do half my movement. Does night training. Yep. And um, I'm going to use action surge and try and stab the other guy. Okay, so rearing the horse around. Um, you also, um, because you have night training, the horse has not done its entire action. So it is a trained mount, meaning that you can make it do um, you can make it do dash, disengage, or dodge in the turn. It will dodge. Okay. So that does not give you the bonus. It gives the horse the bonus. Sure. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Sweet. I'm not from very familiar with mounted combat. So it's really you. basic. I re definitely had to refresh myself this game. And all look right. at all the things that I could do to it. So that'll be a 17 to hit him. That's going to hit him. Roll me damage. Uh... That will be 12. Oh, 12 points of damage. Um, You are going to spin around, rear your horse up, and he's going to aim his spear at your face, and you're going to take his head off at the neck. Holy crap. All right. It's like, fall back and stay together. Grab the horse. All right. Uh, up there, you gave the help action to Darrett. Darrett is... Uh, Darrett's going to roll a 24 to tackle this guy with your help uh, and it's gonna most heinous you son of a bitch I'll fucking kill you <laughs> he's gonna start yelling as he's I, I don't care if it's nightly these are my friends <laughs> and he's gonna start like just beating the shit out of this guy with his bare hands uh, at this point Levna's going to act on the same initiative is going to turn around you got a horse rookie? Make sure that uh, make sure the southern flank is watched. I'm going to save the mercenary. And it's going to, <laughs> to rush up and try to make sure that Derrett doesn't kill him. Like just straight up beat him to death. 
Uh, and with that, it is the battlefield event. Um, one moment, please, while I roll a d4. All right. Um, uh, as this happens uh, from where you are, I need Levna and Kalara, and I need Orontiros and Hazel to all make me deck saving throws as suddenly from the edge of the map where the screaming and cacophony of battle take place, two spooked horses are going to burst through the fray and almost trample you. Both of you make me a deck save. Um, you are right next to a cart, uh, Orontiros and Hazel, so you can actually make this deck save at a plus two. And cool. Orontiros also gets a plus a d4. Okay, and plus safe. a d4. Mm -hmm. Five. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think that's going to help at all. I get nine. Kalara <laughs> is not very dexterous. I, even with the uh, the d4, uh, that's mm. an eight. <laughs> from... Okay. Oof. All right. So on that note, the horses are going to rush out into the battlefield. Uh, they are going to die, like kind of run directly toward you. Uh, and the three of you are going to dive to the ground, uh, being knocked prone to prevent yourselves from being trampled to death. So you will begin next round uh, completely, uh, completely prone. Uh, and we are going to start a brand new round. One moment, please. Perfect. Okay. I like I like these battlefield effects. Uh, it's cool. Right. Mm -hmm. They're great. It reminds me of old, old times when we have uh, we have done combat in LARPs and things. Mm -hmm. Okay, pardon me. I just have to finish adjusting something. Okay. While you're adjusting that, would there be any knowledge or that we could have seen that... Like, these aren't just town folk. These are, like, mercenaries that were hired, correct? Yep. The town folk were the I mean, ones being slaughtered. Were these yes. the mercenaries? Okay, just making sure, wondering helping. how mixed... The these are the these are the uh, the ones that Kalara helped. Yeah, some of them, at least one of them was. Ooh. They're not. It's not the entire company, but it's uh, it is uh, it is a portion of them, and that is bad enough. Uh, as you have a brief, just a momentary respite, driving to the ground, uh, you are going to see that from the fray on the western side. Um, a hulking figure swinging a formidable battle axe leads a band of mercenaries through the chaos. He cuts through the few remaining members of Vogler's militia as he draws closer. Kalara, you are going to see a blade strike down and a very familiar set of blonde hair tumble to the ground as your brother takes an axe to the back. Uh, she's just going to shriek. And uh, the head of the militia's division of this the half ogre is going to turn and look at you and go, Look here! He points his axe at Godfrey. We've got someone who thinks this is still a game. Kill him. Uh, and with that, we are in a new phase of the combat. Uh, new round. Hazel, you act first. You are prone. Uh, for those prone. of you who are prone, it takes half your movement to stand up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So we've got we've got big guys way down there. Mm -hmm. They're about forty feet from you right now. Forty feet, you say? Uh, so it is cool. four members of the militia, or not the militia? Pardon me. Four members of the mercenary troop and one half ogre captain. Okay. Um, I would like to hold my action for when the um the half of ogre captain comes closer um i'm hoping he comes closer anyway um and when he gets to within well it when he when he gets closer um i think it's 10 feet 10 feet 10 feet's my range of that um i'm i want to cast um uh earth tremor um and use half my movement to get up basically Sounds good. Uh, now, will Earth Tremor affect only him, or will it affect everybody in front of you? Oh, it'll affect everybody. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> 
All right. So with that, but um, specifically, I want him in range. So sounds great, uh, Hazel. It's your turn. What do you? Or I mean, not Hazel. Uh, so that's what you've done. You've held your action. Um, remind me if he gets closer to anybody, and I missed that for yep. some reason. Um, Kalara, it is your turn. What do you do? Where exactly is my brother? Just at the edge of the fray behind the the half ogre. Okay. Um. Thing. Oh, I don't want to use my spell slots because I want like healing, but I also want to fuck that guy up. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I think she's going to help Dermot try and finish off this mercenary on the ground. Okay. Because, all right, screw it. This is this is not okay, and I'm gonna try and just bludgeon him with the, like the butt of the spear to knock right. him out. That sounds good. I'll say that that will work as an improvised weapon. So give me uh, give me an attack roll with advantage because he's prone. Uh, dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Uh, what is your strength score? Uh, 13. 13, okay, plus one. Two points of damage is all he takes, um, which is all he needs after the punch that Derek gave him. Um, you are going to just, like, bring the, the edge of your, your spear down on his head, knocking his head into uh, into a rock on the road, and he's going to go a bit, a bit limpy-dimpy. There. Okay. And then I'm going to try and move back towards the others. Okay, you may do so. You have 30-foot movement. Okay. Uh, and at this point, let's see, that is going to be, the force is going to trample down the hill, uh, and the half ogre is going to, uh, rush forward as he does. He's going to hurl a javelin at Godfrey. So when did Hazel's thing need to go off? Uh, it is going to happen basically as soon as he throws this. So don't worry about that. Uh, so they are going to rush forward. Uh, Hazel, he's going to throw a javelin basically like right as they're kind of ed going through the edge of the tree. It is going to, to go by and um, Godfrey, it's going to be sailing directly at your throat. Uh, you are going to reflexively raise your shield arm. Ispen's shield is going to catch the edge of edge of the javelin, uh, and it is going to go ting and ricochet directly into Razira's hands. He rolled a nat one, and you have a magic shoot. <laughs> Razira, you know what's right. wrong with him. <laughs> uh, all right, that was his turn. Uh, all right, and uh, as he is, uh, so 10 feet from you or 10 feet from the rest of the, the, the party was what you were going it for. It says range 10 feet. So that's range ten feet from you. Would you want to move a little closer? If if I could, if he's there, um, then yeah, I'd like to move closer to do okay. it. Okay. So we'll say that you were kind of standing over by the horses because that that's yeah. more logical for that. Uh, so uh, he and let's see, ten feet. So uh, I, what is the save for that strength? Uh, dexterity. Okay. So I need a dex save from. Uh, I need a dex save from Razira, Godfrey, Kalara. Uh, and oh, no. three of the baddies. Oh, and Orantiros. Left though. I need a, a deck save from everybody, including the horse. So one sec, I'll roll for the horse first. Not Dirty 20. twenty. Nice. Uh, what's my DC? Uh, fourteen. Okay, cool. The, the horse will succeed, so that does not 15. complicate everyone else. Yes, fourteen. Uh, fifteen. Okay, that sucks for him. Um, the bless did it. I would okay, have the less. bless is absolutely going to do this. Um, oh, we get as they are approaching as well. the half yep. ogre yeah, and two. Two. Did any of you fail? I got fifteen. What did we need? You're, you're totally fine. In fact, you're already prone, so this doesn't really affect you, oh. even yeah. if you fail. Um, so that's great. <laughs> well, you don't um, take damage, so. So, um, but the entire first three members of there actually uh, we'll say that he's right there just for, for ease of this um the half ogre 
captain and two of the members of the mercenary unit are going to fail. Awesome. They take six bludgeoning damage because I rolled a six on my d6. Nice. Um, and is not prone. And then if the ground in that area is loose earth or stone, it becomes difficult terrain until cleared uh, with each okay. five foot di- diameter portion requiring at least one minute to clear by hand. Okay, so the area around you is rough terrain, which means that it costs twice as much movement to go through. I will quickly mark that. And, uh, nice. Okay, so that's... Get him! Inf- <laughs> okay, so that's rough terrain now. Cool. There we go. Okay, fantastic. So you, you'll get him as the ground... <laughs> Uh, all right, Orantiros or Razira, who wants to go first? Mind if I go first this time, Kiel? All right. Go for it. Okay. So... What do you want to do? Uh, uh, I think Razira is going to... Uh, so dismounting... Costs half your move. Yes. And then it's difficult terrain... So if I have I'm, thirty, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna say there's a rules call I'm gonna make right now though that you might okay. want to be aware of. Um, you are a mounted person right now. Striking mm-hmm. someone that's prone with a ranged weapon will not have disadvantage. That doesn't make any sense in the world. You're literally sit- shooting someone who's laying like a pancake. It should be easier. Okay. Because you're then, like looking directly down at them. Then quest for two weapon fighting. No, it's light melee, so I'd be able to do a bonus action stabby stab. I have to stabby stab. Um, so I it's 10 feet to get to the ogre, and I have 30 feet of movement. Yeah. You can can I do there. it? Yeah, cool. You can, make, you can make it there just barely. Yeah. Because all, well, it's only it's only five feet of movement, dude. Because you just have to go. Oh, there. yeah, you're right. The um, ogre squares. Yeah. Are, so you yeah, absolutely can. So you horse. can. Yep. So and you'll have advantage to attack them while they're prone. Yeah. Well. So you can literally just dive on top of them, blood smearing behind you. Yep. Um. Have they? They've all taken about the same amount of damage, right? They're not looking. One uh, worse the, the other. The ogre looks quite tough. Okay. Uh, the two, I think we're going to focus. Look about half dead. Mm-hmm. All the right. Two guards in the front look quite banged up. What do you do? Uh, Razir's Razir's going to do both attacks on the ogre. Um, so she's going to take one stab with her rapier and then one stab with her with her dagger. Sounds good. Go ahead and uh, make me attacks. You have Is advantage the, on both because they're prone. Yeah. Wow, I rolled. Okay, for so for the rapier is... Do I get a d4? Uh, hashtag you, blast. Hashtag blast. Um, because boy, boy howdy, I rolled double sixes on that first thing. Plus six is 12. Plus two is 14. I'm going to spend determination to do that to 16. Please, does that hit? That hits. Sweet. And then the daggy daggy is... That's a much nicer. 19 plus six is going to be 25. They are both going to hit. Cool. Um, So a D, D, D. I'm going to do sneak attack on the first one. Sounds good. Um, rapier is d8, then a d4. All right, so that's 10, 14, 18 points of damage. Ooh. Um, that is beautiful. Beautiful. Um, you are going to hop down and start tearing into this, um, this this huge half ogre that's on the ground, uh, causing his blood to spill out onto the ground in front of you as he kind of roars in pain. Um, yeah, that's going to be. That, what do, do you do? Anything else with your action? Uh, nope, because that was my bonus action, and that was movement. Um, and I don't think she's going to move away because I'll just provoke. Um. Yeah, she's just gonna 
stand there and just be like, All right, come on, big guy. Who comes up on your own sides? As she holds up her sword and dagger. Nice. Orontiros, it's your turn then. What do you do? All right. Uh, well, standing up would probably be best. Okay. So that takes half your movement. All right. And... If I can't see you there, um, is a cantrip usually a bonus action? Cantrip is usually, it'll say in the spell, but it's usually an action. Which one are you thinking about? Oh, I see now. It says action. Darn. Hmm. What were you thinking? I was think, wondering if I could cast a, a vicious mockery and a and an arrow at the same time. You cannot, cannot. unfortunately. <laughs> Ooh. So many choices when you have spells. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's real easy for. In for, that for case, just, how just... how healthy are these individual these? I gotta say that half ogre has seen better days, and the first two guards look pretty bloodied. Okay, and the ones behind the reinforcements look pretty tough. And there's two behind them. There are two. A total of five guys. Okay. Um, they didn't bring burgers. After standing up, seeing the confusion, <clears throat> um, he's going to use one of his canines to cause some blood from his thumb, and he's going to wipe it down his face and cast Bane. Ooh. What does that do? And he's going to speak some elvish magic. Uh, up to three creatures of your choice that you see within range must make charisma saving throws. Oh, these guys are super charismatic. It's the anti. It's the anti bless baby. Anti -bless. Okay, so who are you targeting with this? Uh, the healthiest and biggest of of them. Okay. So the two in the back that aren't hurt yet, and the big guy. Okay. Got lots of charisma, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure the, the big guy just... will actually beat your roll, I'm pretty sure. What is my DC on this? So it should All be right. uh, 8 plus your ability modifier plus your uh, proficiency, right? So it should be 14, I think? Yes. Okay. So the big guy, let me just double check that he doesn't have a minus 3 to something. He does not. So the big guy will succeed, but both of the, both of the mercs at the back are going to fail. Uh, as right. they are spooked by your weird elven magic. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some kind of hex on us. Get him. All right. Do you have a bonus action you'd like to do? Uh, can one move as a bonus action? No, but you still have half your movement, so you still have at least 15 feet. It look... Uh... This wagon here. Yeah. That looks like a good spot to kind of perch in. Absolutely. So climbing so the wagon will just count there. as rough terrain, so it'll just take double, so you can climb on top of it easily. Kind of right right there? Absolutely, yeah. You can absolutely just kind of like legolas up the side of it. Doop, 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 doop. All right. And prepare that's... yourself for trouble. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's going to be your turn. turn. Uh, Godfrey, it is your turn. You are mounted, and there are four of these mercenaries and a half ogre still here. What do you do? Okay. Um... Oh, I can't let the brave little Kender be on its own in there. Uh, so I'm going to take. Uh, can I move the horse? Yep. You absolutely can move the horse. Okay. Um... I'm going to kind of go around, perfect, and just kind of put myself there, and i um, going to stab at the ogre. Okay, uh, you are riding down on a horse, you'll have advantage because he is still prone. Okay. Like... Uh, and I'm going to spend a hurt the more to try to get a glancing shot at you from prone. All right, cool. I'll be like, you think this is just a game? You are. And that'll be a dirty 20. That's going to hit. Guess what? He got a 25 to hit you. Yep, 24 to hit yeah. you. I rolled a nat 20 and a 19 with disadvantage. Ooh. You were meant to take I mean, this least, battle axe. At least it was disadvantage. <laughs> Unless right? someone wants to cast another silvery barbs on me. All at this point, I have all or nothing. 
Okay. Um, and I've got some weird blood magic thing going, so I I can flavor it however it, it is. The elven magic and the leaves and the the wind swirls around you and redirects this beast's blade. Who who gains the advantage? Who gains the advantage that you stole? So pick somebody. I've been having good luck giving Godfrey the okay, advantage. So Godfrey, um, your your strike is going to gain uh, advantage if you choose to use that now. You don't need to. You can save it because that hit hurt hit. Um, yeah. Is does a fourteen hit you now? Uh, no. Okay, God, my luck no. ran out. So he's going to lash up uh, desperately with a, an attack that you you just feel in your bones would have dealt a good like 12 points of slashing damage to you or more oof uh, but instead you are going to strike him before he does uh, cleaving his arm probably roll me damage nine well why don't you tell me how it goes All Right. so uh, he's swinging up with his axe to try and hit me yep he's going to try to take you right through the midsection and these swirling leaves kind of get in the way and like push the uh, arm away and uh, you know they're gonna swing back around and help guide my blade right down into uh, and slash him right across the neck as I'm passing by with the horse yeah all right that is perfect um all right at the top of and uh, oh I, I want to actually uh, I still got a bit of movement with the horse oh, so dear. I just kind of want to move up uh, a little closer to um, right about here just to Take get in the middle of them all. Sounds good to me. Uh, as you do that uh, from the top, uh, you are going to hear the sound of metal boots um, kind of rushing your direction. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Oh my god, I can do it. Um, and Levna is going to rush around, don't take all the fun, and is going to take a swing at uh, this. It's about time you show up. She's going to miss. She gonna miss. <laughs> no. Uh, so she brings that down with an eight. She's winded from running in the armor. <laughs> Honestly? Oh wait, she has pack tactics. Never mind. Yes. Uh, that's a fourteen. It's still a miss. Damn it. Um, but she's gonna come. <laughs> the next one's taking your fucking head off, buddy. What? I'm allowed to swear, she says, glaring at you. Uh, Derrett's going to stand up and uh, he's going to throw a rock. I'm going to reroll that because that was cocked. A rock does one point of damage plus... Uh, okay, so she uh, Levna charges forward, brings her blade down, this says the swear thing, and snarls at the guy who goes, huh, and then a rock's going to hit him directly in the teeth. Right yes. underneath the guard, <laughs> um, and that's what that's what I got. Uh, with that, uh, the guards are going to stand up. One of them is going to stand up and take a swing at you, Godfrey. Uh, Godfrey, that's going to be a no. Mm, an eighteen? No, because of the magic shield. <laughs> All right, the first guard will stand up, and def you'll deflect a shield. Another one is going to stand up uh, and is going to try to uh, skewer the Kender uh, because she's right there. You know what? No, I didn't see the Kender be a total bat. Well, the Kender did jump on the boss and stab a bunch. He's going to throw his spear directly. You know what? He's going to... Yeah, I don't... yeah. She, he's going to throw his spear directly at the mage because magic is scary. <laughs> so... Uh, shield. Ooh. Okay, perfect. Uh, the spear is going to go and is going to bounce off of an illusory shield that goes right in front of your face. Uh, that is your reaction. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> um, one of the guards is going... Or pardon, one of the guards. I keep saying guard. Uh, one of the mercenaries is going to try to stab Levna. And wow, that was the slowest nat 20 rolling into an 8 I've ever seen. It was just... Ooh, <laughs> I was gonna say they have Bane on them too, so it's even worse. God, okay. Uh, and then oh, the last one is gonna take another swing at Godfrey, uh, and that's gonna be. They have Bane, so they lose a d 
four. four. Yep. So that would have been an 18. Which would have been a hit, right? Nope. Okay. Well, Bane brings it to a 16, so that doesn't even matter. Uh, they crowd around you trying to attack, but they just cannot find purchase as you are moving around on your horse. Uh, that is going to be their turns, and... Okay. Um, uh, and with that, a you are going to hear a roar uh, as on initiative zero another an uninjured guard well pardon me no they're actually pretty injured another hostile mercenary is going to rush out of the fray with a with a spear brandished at Kalara another attacker has joined the fray alright top of the initiative Hazel you are up what would you like to do I um <laughs> see here what can i do from here um so the one that's in front of riz is the one that threw a spear at me yes cool can i move that five feet and attack on the diagonal yeah you absolutely can you totally can rush up and hammer hammer time him awesome i'm a, I'm a hammer time cool uh good luck yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got what? A plus six on this, I think? Plus five, plus uh, six, something like that? I have a plus five. Um, I'm going to use my determination. Okay. And that makes that a 17. Uh, 17 is going to be a hit. Roll me damage. Yes. Hazel cast hammer. <laughs> Hazel cast hammer. Um, now, because it has uh, versatile, that means I can use it with two hands, right? Yep. Or, okay. And I believe it does a D10 if you're using it with two hands, if it's a hammer? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, that's eight damage. Cool. Uh, why don't you take over the narration for this one, my friend? Um, yeah. Uh, Hazel, like, throws up the, the shield, the spear shatters on it, and she just kind of whips her hammer around one one handed to grab it in two steps that five feet and just brings it down on it on that guy's head <laughs> yeah you're gonna see the top of his head go through the bottom of his jaw yeah <laughs> uh that is gonna be quite disgusting uh, do you have anything else you'd like to do with a uh, bonus action uh, i don't have any bonus actions so no sounds good i'm good all right kalara it's your turn what do you do okay so this mercenary came out screaming behind me yeah so i'm now aware that he's going to try and attack me yep. um question having been in and out of the mercenary camp relatively frequently to help them mm -hmm. do i think i could call that on its unused horse over with my animal handling and like a sharp, good sharp whistle or something i think you may need to make an animal handling roll with disadvantage because of the chaos but you can try all right. Um, that is 17. Okay. Uh, the horse is going to hear your whistle uh, and is going to come your direction. It's going to, to rush up to you. Would you like to mount it? Yes, please. Okay. That'll take half your move. You have okay. mounted a horse. Uh, it now acts on your initiative. Okay. Can I get away over to where my brother fell? Uh, yes, you can. Because let me just check one thing. Uh, I think that is her major. I only have five feet of reach, so yes, uh, the horse has a speed of sixty, uh, and because it is a trained horse, you can you can ask it to dash. Okay. Which I would like to get to where my brother is, and try and save him. <laughs> that is. Basically, she's tunnel visioning, crying, like just this is terrifying and horrifying. And yeah, sounds good. Um, you absolutely can do that. Um, and uh, with that, you probably very pass. incongruous her up on there with her like white but bloodstained shirt, bright blue skirt, like looking very like a festival day, not like a battle. Mm. 
Um, you can see that he's just on the edge of the fray. You will have to enter the fray to do this, uh, but you will be able to reach him. Okay. Do you wish to do so? What was the issue of entering the, f the fray? You risk taking damage. Okay. Um, I'm... Yeah, no, I think she's tunnel visioning on that. She's going to try and, like, pull him out. Sounds good. I've put your brother there in the fray. Um... All right, so you are going to be able to move up to him without actually any problem because of this horse's speed. One moment, please. Mm -hmm. Of course, a horse. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to encounter the fray. The 15-foot wide area marked by the design of the edge of the map represents dozens of clashing combatants. The area and battlefield beyond the map are difficult terrain. A creature that enters the fray for the first time in a turn starts their turn there, uh, must succeed a deck saving throw. Okay. The fray cannot be dispelled or damaged. Okay, don't fail me now, die. Uh, 19. 19, okay. You are Next going save. to take, uh, you're going to take no damage, but several blades are going to lash out at you as you go to help your brother. Um, you used your action to contact the horse. Do you have a bonus action that you'd like to use? Um... Yes, let me just check my spells the really quickly. The healing word quickly. is a bonus action? I can't remember off the top of my head. It is. It most certainly is. And is. I would like to use that. Okay, healing word. You can absolutely do that. Um, and so that's just... a d4 plus my spellcasting mod plus my ability as a life cleric. Okay. Uh, so, uh, casting healing word, magical energy of Mishakal is going to swirl around you as you as you speak Mishakal's name and your brother is going to suddenly snap his eyes open and, <gasps> and look up at you with this Gilara? What did you? Uh, and as that happens a couple of the mercenaries around you that are trying to stab you are going to like stumble back in with eyes wide Ooh. What the blazes? It's the gods! The gods! It's magic! She healed him! She's just gonna shriek like curses at them. <laughs> um, actually, Just how dare these assholes take her help and her assistance and then hurt her brother. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, all right, so uh, down the initiative. Good job, Kalara. We have Orantiros or Razira. Who would like to go first? I think that I'll let's loose an arrow. I'm not sure if I'm flanking any of these gentlemen. Um, you're not quite. Not quite? Actually, yeah, you're not quite from this angle. But flanking's not really a thing in 5e, so that works out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I will... Uh, actually, there's one kind of a approaching the others from behind that kind of ran out of the fray. Mm -hmm. I'll let loose an arrow at All this right. this man. Make me, make me an attack roll. Don't forget to add your bless. All right. So d20 plus d4. Oh. So if it's a natural one, Ooh. but the d4... It wouldn't bring it above a botch, unfortunately. Hmm. Uh, because we're using botch rolls in this. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, so. Well. Uh, I'll, I'll let you choose. Do you want funny or dangerous? Funny and dangerous is my middle name. All right, that sounds great. And so what's going to happen is you're going to take a step forward, uh, put your foot up on the side of the cart, knock an arrow back, and as you lean forward into it, this old cart, uh, you'll not see that it has taken a significant amount of damage and you are going to slip as the front panel of the cart snaps away, even underneath your fairly lightweight, uh, and is going to kind of drop you on the ground kind of almost at this guy's feet. You're going to roll a bit and uh, kind of stumble and just be like right in front of him. Your arrow kind of having fallen out of your bow going, oh. Hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Do you have a bonus action? 
Oh, uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> can you, what is pulling a different weapon out? You have one item interact, so you go. At, you can draw a dagger or something if you'd like. Okay, and I'm sword. prone? <laughs> I'm gonna say that you're not prone from that, but you are like right in his range and you miss the shot. Am I able to pull my short blade and use vicious mockery? Unfortunately not use vicious mockery because it is an action and you, you tried to shoot. Uh, but you can draw the sword. You'll drop your bow it on the ground and It is a full action, it. right. It is a full action, yeah. So a bonus action would be specific spells. Right. But I think you're probably uh, about out of first level spells now. Oh, I am. <laughs> and there are very few bonus action spells. <laughs> yeah, I, I have one which have thrown me off. That that okay. one. So in that case, we'll say we'll that, that was level. you. Um, you still have your movement, though. You could choose to turn and, and, and run away. I will go back to back with to Riz and Hazel. All right, sounds good. Uh, heading across the terrain, you'll kind of do the ho -ho 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 -ho, do the bard thing of like running away from a combat. That was beautiful. I love it. All right. Oh, you're good. Good. <laughs> and now right, I'm please. here. <laughs> Nobody saw that, right? Nobody so what? <laughs> All right, Razira, it's your turn. Um, so I think um, so as a bonus action, Riz is going to for flavor, um, like go between uh, Orantiro's legs and do the little <laughs> to the um to the to the gentleman at the never at the east of us kind of like who's kind of mm -hmm. coming from our from our backs yeah. um and I'm going to taunt at him um be like come get me um so I need him to make a nope. wisdom save please nope nope okay no, so he did not he rolled a 9 he has disadvantage on all attack rows attack rolls against targets other than me until the start of my next turn. Hey you! I see you! <laughs> and then Riz will uh, then promptly take a five foot step forward um, and a sneak attack. This guy with the root beer. Well, if he, All right, she snake attack sneak him. Attack. Solid snake attack. Owl. Snake attack. All right, let's do my Heim grab All right, let's do it. Crap. Ooh, it's not quite a crit. I'm waiting for that crit, man, on that sneak attack. Um, 16 plus 6 is 22. I'm assuming a 22 that hit. Gonna, that's going to hit. Roll me damage. <sighs> do, 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 do. I'm pretty sure that I don't need to tell you the result of this with a with an injured mercenary. <laughs> yes, um, that's a, that's a, a 14 points of damage. 14 points of damage. Do uh, you want to take over? Yes. I think um, Riz is going to kind of like do a quick little little swipe uh, on like at the, at the knee to bring them down to her level. And then she's just going to be like, you're not supposed to cheat at this, you know, and uh, stab forward uh, through yeah. the base of the neck. <laughs> Uh, he's gonna go completely limp. He is out of the fight. Good job. And that is me. All right, that's gonna be you. Um, and now it is Godfrey. Godfrey, there are uh, there are two more here and one attacking from the east. What do you do? Okay. Um, well, I'm a little distracted looking over at uh, where Kilara just went and um, kind of a little tied up here. So I'm going to uh, look back at uh, Derek and just be like, Derek. Kalara! And uh, try and get him, encourage him to go over there. And uh, then I'm going to um, take a stab at this guy over here. All right, go ahead. All right. And uh, I still have the advantage from, because uh, I had advantage already on that other attack. Um, yep. So technically, technically, it activated when you were both attacking each other. But he can choose so he, when he uses it. So it's yeah, right. exactly. So you still have it, right? He still yep. has it. Well, it's yeah, the yeah. Magic of the green shield, you know, like it leaves, right? Elven yep. magic. Yes. It's obviously an elven green shield. It's all Ispen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's a twenty-five to hit him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's gonna hit. Roll me damage. And oh, 
Minimum, so seven. Your uh, minimum seven. damage is seven? Yep. Okay. All right, so your blade <laughs> is going to chop down into Hard. this one, um, cleaving into the side of his shoulder meat, and he's going to grunt. And um, do you have any other actions? I do not. Okay. <clears throat> Fucking die already. Um, and, and I'm going to uh, look at Levna, and I'm like, make sure to hit him this time. You had to say it, didn't you? You botched. Oh, no. I I botched. <laughs> she stabs God for She instead. stabs the horse in the flank and scares. I'm not going to attack the horse. Um, she's going. What did you? And she's going to uh, as she raises up. Um, the uh, the spearman is. Oh God! What would be the? She botches in this middle of combat. Um, your horse is going to kind of like rear up a bit, and she's going to like shy away. Uh, and uh, she's going to basically do uh, do a run through, and her blade's going to come down and f- get lodged in the wall behind him as he steps out of the way quite adroitly. Um, you had to say something, didn't you? Oh wait, she has advantage. What am I doing? I'm I'm dumb. Oh, she had advantage. She has advantage because of, she has pack tactics. So whenever she's five there? feet away from We're an ally... We're just not ally. used to pack tactics on a person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. really not, so that's my bad. We're used to uh, it with so, the wolves, but not So it, instead, uh, let me rephrase that. So what actually happened, my, my dear viewers, uh, is that I check her stats, whoop, so and then I go... She has pack tactics from me. Yeah, from you. Um, pointing so, that one out there. This is how our pack tactics work. Okay, so that is going to be... (laughs) Okay. Um, So what did you say before that? You said... Uh, Make sure to hit him this time. Oh, my mistake. Like this, and she's going to take a step back, wind up, and bring her greatsword down right on the the part of the guy's hair and is going to part his hair and his face and his neck and his chest about to belly button level. And then it's uh, going to kick him in the sir? junk to pull the blade out. <laughs> sir, yep, just like that, sir. <laughs> this is why I'm your bottle shit. <laughs> uh, a spear's going to come directly at her face from one of the other guards. Uh, and that's actually going to hit her, if I'm not mistaken, because her AC is exactly 18. Uh, she is going to take. Holy Did crap. It rain? Did he bane? Oh, I quick? didn't. I didn't bane. Yes. Uh, it's going to. It's going to cut her cheek, anime style, with a little dribble of blood. And she goes, oh shit! And is going to bring her blade up. Thank you very much, Robin. Um, as uh, the one behind uh, takes a step forward and stabs, unable to do any more damage. Uh, Derrett is going to take your advice on his initiative and is going to run by, having picked one of the spears up that the uh, the one that had been beaten um, had dropped. Now he is armed and dangerous. Uh, and finally, the last one of these um, last one of the mercenaries is going to rush over and is going to kind of wade through the rough terrain and hurl his spear at Razira. Well, Razira, it's been nice knowing you. That's an 18. Does it hit? Yeah. All right. 18. I can only throw it one handed, though. So that's something. Uh, that's Razira. Good. I was hoping you... hiding behind my friends was going <laughs> to make it difficult. Um, unfortunately, you. Ooh, uh, how many points do you have left? Thirteen. Oh, actually, uh, the spear is going to, and is going to punch into the side of your shoulder for seven points of piercing damage. Yelchies. All right. I'm a that, very hurt, Kender. Now. Very hurt, Kender. And with that, it is time for another random event on the battlefield. Ooh, this is a new one. Ooh. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, okay. Um, so uh, there are six friendlies. I'm gonna leave Derrett out of this just because it's he's an extra. 
Um, so, uh, counting from the windows, I'll have Hazel be number one, Clara be number two, Godfrey three, Orantiros four, Razira five, and um, Levna six. Okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, Orantiros, uh, from near the... Uh, from near your feet, uh, a wounded member of Vogler's militia is going to crawl out, bleeding very profusely. Help me! Help me! Uh, and is going to try to uh, to beg you for help. Um, top of the initiative, we're back with Hazel. Hazel, what do you do? Cool. Um, I don't like this guy who just threw a spear at Riz. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to use one of my last uh, first level spells that I can do without expending a spell slot because I'm out of spell slots. <laughs> um, and uh, cast Ray of Sickness at him because Oof. fuck that dude. <laughs> All right, Ray of Sickness. <laughs> Give it to me. That is a 24. Uh, yeah, that that's better than his than his armor class. Uh, roll me damage and tell me what you get. Oh, uh, that is fifteen poison damage, and he must make a con save if he's not dead. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? I'll make it anyway. Ow. Cool, cool. Well, he got a his corpse got a thirteen. <laughs> oh, so he's also a poisoned corpse. Great. He's a poisoned corpse. You don't want to eat him. Tell me what happens. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, so after I uh, after I smashed the one guy's head in, um, I was going to whirl around at him anyway, and then I saw that he threw a spirit riz, and I'm just going to point my uh, my warhammer, which is also my arcane fo focus, at him, and um, just tell him to fuck off. <laughs> okay, sounds great. Um, yep, and. What happens to him? How does he die? Um, he gets hit with this sickly green uh, spell energy and I think just throws up until he dies. Oh, the... oh all right. Uh, That's brutal. That is absolutely brutal. brutal. Uh, he is going to collapse dying <laughs> and the rustling ground from your previous spell is going to slowly start to like just bury parts of his extremities. Excellent. Or Tiros should write a song about this absolutely should um all right so uh with that over at the fray Derek is going to use it finish using his action to rush over uh and he's gonna be like my lady are you okay uh it is your turn kalara now starting my turn in the fray does that mean i have to it does i need another save again? Save. Yeah. okay uh that is going to be 16. You're so lucky. 16. <laughs> Perfect. All right. 16 is all you needed. Uh, a blade okay. is going to slash by you, but honestly, they are kind of giving you a bit of space since that spell. Um, Derek is going to I'm rush. I'm trying to pull Kern up on the horse okay. with me and make me a, make help. Me a strength if check just to make sure can you can do it. Can swing up as well, then I want to get out of here. Come on, strength, don't fail me. Okay. Uh, that is going to be, holy shit, a dirty 20. Okay, so with, <laughs> with the strength of, uh, of a big strength sister. Strength of even, fear. Strength of fear, even though you're the little sister. Uh, you are going to uh, grab, uh, grab your brother and throw him fireman style over the side of your horse. How many hit points did you heal on him? It was... Uh, I didn't actually roll because you just went with it, so I just assumed it was That's a... Fair rough things so one sec let me please double check what that does uh, so it was 1d4 plus your wisdom and there's an extra thing I because I'm a, oh, a life right. cleric I add more um, so that's 11 11 okay you know what you're gonna pull him to his feet I, I rolled think absolute I max I think I, I think I can handle getting up and he'll pull himself onto the horse behind you how did you do that? I always thought the gods are smiling. Thought, I always thought that mom said the sun shined out of your ass, but I didn't realize that it was it was the truth. 
Uh, and with that, you can cause the horse to make a double move if you want. Um, if I can try and move slow enough past Derrick. I don't think the horse is going to take three full-sized riders. Okay. I just figured I was pretty small. <laughs> so it might manage. You're, you're a full-sized um, girl. I think that... Okay. So where would you like to head? Over back toward everybody else? Yes. Okay. Derrick's going to like hit the ground running and be like, hey, wait, wait, wait. Okay. 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 No, I'll be right there. <laughs> I'll, I'll guard your flank. All right. Uh, down in the initiative, it is now Orontiros or Razira. And there is only one combatant left. What do you do? Well, I've been waiting all game to use Vicious Mockery, so I... Oh, God. Go for it. Do it. <laughs> Might as Insult well Insult him to death. All right. Well, the common okay. tongue has, so, as I've seen with all of you, the common tongue has so many flavorful insights. Insults. And insights. Mm -hmm. And, um... Wisps of, uh... Of music notes are going to bark from his words as he calls this man in elven tongue, actually, um, an uncouth and unmarriageable prospect as he condemns his his life to a, a life alone, the little life he has left. Does he just run crying off the battlefield? <laughs> and um, I'm hoping so. He definitely okay, so failed. Laughs. He definitely <laughs> failed his roll. Uh, roll me a d4 damage. Oh, right. It does psychic damage. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you're yep, insulting them. You're, you're he insult. took a mighty four. You're insulting uh, wow. people. He knew what it meant, even though he didn't speak Alvin. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, he's yeah. going to stumble Hazel knew back. What it meant. Is, he, is he cursing me again? Is he cursing me again? I can hear him inside my mind. I can hear him inside my mind. Uh, Razira, um, what would you like to do? Uh, Razira is gonna, is gonna just st stride up to him, um, rapier a blazing, um, and she's just gonna go, oh yeah, he, he's really cursing your mind, um, and I'm sure this uh, steel is gonna hurt even more because of it. It's his cursed steel. <laughs> And she will make an attack with her rapier. All right, go ahead. Um, oh, that's a that's 19. That was so close to 20. I actually don't damage. know what I would die, but that is 20. And you have sneak attack if you Fuck. choose. I know. Oh, I choose. Oh, I choose. <laughs> um. All right. Wow, I'm like rolling nice combinations that equal 14 but all by getting them different ways <laughs> so 14 points of piercing damage so this nice. mercenary um yeah, that How's is he? he's not doing very well at all uh all right i, I think if he's that, still uh, up he is absolutely even with the not. emotional like damage this? oh <laughs> oh yes yeah. he dies from emotional damage but also the rapier helped yeah. The rape here um, and through the heart probably help. Yeah, she's going she's going to curse him through the heart as well and she's going to just thrust her rapier into his heart real quick. And you will do so, thrusting your rapier directly into his heart. Uh, he will slump to the ground and one moment. As you do so, uh, the battle will f come to an end around you. You being the last pocket of this, uh, the fray uh, begins to dissolve as various uh, members of the, the mercenaries uh, rush away as... Um, as Raven and Cudgel and Beckon and Becklin uh, approach from the south with some a little bit of the militia that had still not been overwhelmed by the mercenaries. Uh, they rush over and begin... Um, scaring away many of the the stragglers there uh, pushing them back toward the north and with that the camera is going to pull out revealing that aside from the few men that they had brought with them the entirety of vogler's militia lies either injured or dead at your feet 
Whatever happened here today will be remembered for the remainder of Vogler's history. As you look around, you can see blood staining the green grass of High Hill. A betrayal today that will not be forgotten. And I think that is where we're going to call game for the day. Sound good to you? Yeah. 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 Oof. I'm just I picturing like, like Kalara's on this horse, but like I think she's just probably covered in dirt because it's all stirred up and sticking and blood and like there's tear tracks through it. Oh. Yep. I bet so. But you know what? I think that it's going to be a little bit nicer for you next episode uh, because uh, you are now level three. What? Yes. <laughs> I get more what? spell slots. More wow. spell slots. Uh, these, these levels are coming fast. I get my next four, they, right? So. All right. So congratulations, everybody. Uh, I'd like you to roll your hit points up right now, if you don't mind. So uh, you are mostly D8s, I'm pretty sure. Uh, except for Hazel's a D6 yeah. and Godfrey's a D10. Said ones and twos are Ones and twos are testing your dice, man. All right. Well, that... Oh, 10. Yeah. I rolled a six. That's nice. I, I like it when a one adds a zero to the end of it. Thank yeah, you for great. your test rolls, Kelly. Uh, Someone now, say we roll can a I one. Do that? <laughs> it's one, ones and twos are just making sure that dice works. Like you just got to make eight. sure the dice. Eight. I rolled nice. a one, then an eight. Yes. I rolled a five, which is not bad for a d6. Honestly, that's pretty damn good. Yeah. Orantiros? Oh, okay. I'm still in at seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so seven. So add seven plus your constitution modifier, which I, I never mind uh, for Arntiros. Uh, so add seven more hit points. Um, all right, so everybody. Also, this level, you are going to be getting your uh, your subclass. So I would really love it if uh, you all were prepared for that next game. So learn your specific oh, yeah. rules. Uh, learn your, um, well, learn everything that you can, I guess. Um, does anybody nice. have any questions? <laughs> Any questions about what they want to go with? Nope. I know what I want. I just have to... I've been uh, nope. thinking about this since we started. There are so many good colleges, man. There, There's so many good ones, but I... Th there's an insult. There's a diss track college. I can't remember what it was called. Lore oh, Bard. the College of, college of Whispers? Of, of lore or whispers that I, I think it's lore like... because lore has cutting words which lets you use your bardic inspiration as a reaction to penalize people yeah. and i've kind of been playing him like that it's mm -hmm. it's fun especially like mm -hmm. like it, it's fun especially when you're just like like just throwing insults at I'll people and actually at them. playing them but i feel like that that suits because i've been like can i cast vicious mockery damn how about now right so uh, lore bards are great too spell. glamour yep. bards are ridiculous if you want to persuade people i can to do see that things. too actually so go read them all um i'll even allow third party stuff if it makes sense for the world so if it's, okay. if it's oh, any good luck i get my them. i get my new lunar sorcery spells too yep. i get like four <laughs> spells this level <laughs> well i get access to four spells this level so good so good um, i get access to spiritual name. weapon now Nice. Oh, what is that? It's, it's a the best spell. spell. I get a floating spectral weapon that I can move away from me to go yeah. attack shit. I'm honestly when it, when when Kago gets magical secrets, I'm thinking of taking spiritual yeah. weapon for her and because it's, it's great. Lore bards get more magical secrets, so you can pick that up yes, sooner. It's and true. Even better, spiritual, spiritual weapon, weapon is, I believe, a bonus spell for my class. It's bonus action. I I oh, also yeah. took a bonus class. action That's spell. Awesome. Which is yeah, great. so I don't. It's not does not count against my prepared spells. Nice. nice. Oh, All right. So wonderful. before next game, please pass me along uh, your subclass that you're deciding to go with, so I can add it to your pre-roll. And uh, with that, <coughs> folks. Thank you for being here with us. We love you so much. Um, we love that you have joined us back on Kryn. Uh, be sure to tune in when we're back in one week, um, because we're doing this every Wednesday until we don't. So um, really love having you here. If you like what we do here, 
you can really help. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Twitch, you can hit the subscribe button, but that'll cost you money. Um, hit the follow button for sure, so you can stick around and know when you will get content. We stream uh, between three and four or five days a week. Uh, it's a very busy schedule, so there's always some Dork Tales content for you. And if you want even more Dork Tales content or want to help the stream directly, we have additional games that are advanced release to our patrons at patreon.com slash dorktales at the $5 tier or higher. Um, I want to thank some of our patrons who are particularly generous. Uh, right now, I need to give uh, major thanks to our world building producers, Shulton and uh, Jade, the maker of monsters, who is once again maxed out one of her tiers so welcome into the world building category jade um i also want to thank uh my divine producer dm michael gray and my other divine producer my mom jan thank you so much for helping design gods and help flesh out our homebrew world uh to our demonic producer precarious who is now alone there in the demonic spot uh i'm sure you won't do anything too evil but I know you will. Tammy the Forever Cleric, you are the wizard of the Patreon and are fantastic. I can't wait to show you the spell I have uh, cooked up for you to bear your name. Uh, I also need to thank the princes of the Patreon, the Traveler, Triselta, Cubby Gummy, Amberthist, Buddy, and Taryn, the original Dork Tales fangirl. You are all amazing. To join them and get your name at the end of episodes and to get advanced content like Dork Tales the Podcast, which is a rambling romp through a uh, multi-dimensional lint trap, uh, go to patreon.com slash dorktales to join the dork squad. And that's all I have for that. Uh, love you big much. And uh, I really hope that, uh, oh, I really hope that that Derek survives and always surprise. So one of the things that I really want to say real quick, Derek, the, the, all they say for his character is like, make him be whatever you need him to be so the players like him because he's going to be around for oh. the game. And I'm like, okay, he's Keanu Reeves. And then he just beats the shit out of somebody in the middle of a fight with his bare hands. And I'm like, he's everybody's favorite now. I like Wick. how earlier you were just like, like before in session zero, it's like, let's choose an NPC that's, you know, listed here because there's these sidekicks that can come along and we're all like, dare it. <laughs> yeah, Levin is the great, meatiest but, of them. <laughs> but yes. dare it, dare it's just great i the only thing that would be better is if we could get harwar right why can't also we? my um <laughs> my sneak attack is 2d6 now baby nice. oh that's so good and with my spell i can give you a 3d6 breath weapon oh my god i am so <laughs> excited to be a fire breathing tender <laughs> it could be fire acid poison or lightning i think oh my or god gold. Oh, God. Oh All right. On that options. note, that's going to be it from us, folks. Um, stay safe out there. Have happy holidays. Have a great new year. And we'll see you in 2023. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye.